Well, what's the crack, everybody? How are you getting on? You're all very welcome to episode 154 of Bookshot Podcast. I am, of course, your host, Humble Mahoney. How are you getting on? Are you well? You're all very welcome, of course, to this very special podcast. For some of you, this will probably be a new venture. Have a look back. If, Like I said, it's 154. Yeah, there's that many before it. 153, to be exact. Actually, no, there's way more. There's close to... It's got to be over 260-odd at this stage with nearly 100 Ramble Pods and Tom and Jerry shows. and You yeah, know, we have, of course, Hard Enough Podcasts, which I'm hoping to get another one done over the weekend for you. How are you? I haven't been gigging. I haven't been gigging. <laughs> it's like uh, Groundhog Day, isn't it? So, yeah, no, did the same thing that I didn't do yesterday. So, hopefully, there's a couple more on the horizon. I'll keep you posted as well as on it like that. There's, it's, it's uncertainty. Nobody knows what the fuck is going on. Feeling that I'm going to be doing a ramble pod anyway during the week. Well, I'll have a good old fucking ramble and rant about things like that. So feel free to send on, you know, any questions, subjects. I'll put it up on Instagram because typically people are good to reply to things on Instagram. When it comes to questions, random weird shit, the better. Um, Thank you very much, Patreons. Oh, the new computer. The, the I've ordered the monitor. So you're to be thanked for... Yeah, I have to thank you. The Patreons have paid for the new computer. New computer itself should be with me within the fortnight. And the monitor, hopefully I should have it by the end of next week. So we are going to be fucking diesel with even more videos. I'm I'm dropping in all these things right now because I'm actually quite giddy. I've just got finished editing it, this episode. And I'm, I'm going to be dropping in all sorts of angry puns and whatnot in the beginning of it. I, I don't actually have to. Oh my lord. But like I said, thank you very much to the Patreons. The video of this will be up over the weekend. So if you're listening now and you do want to go back and just go, you know what, I'll watch the video instead. The video chat of myself and Jerry going through it all is up there for you. As are all the videos of all the podcasts, including the Hard Enough podcast. They're all on my Patreon, exclusive to Patreon. So you know what to do. Got a couple of new Patreons this week. I got in contact with the with the chaps. Uh, shit, why didn't I have their names written down? I'll give you a shout out next week. I have messaged of course and said thank you very much for joining them board so for uh it takes i think it takes about 30 seconds look fucking you know the crack of patreon it helps support the podcast and actually you know if you're digging it and it's getting enough foul stuff into your brain then go for it it's fantastic the exclusivity thing is that you get to see the videos you get a lot of early releases too always a couple of days early with the old uh hard enough podcast I'll always get them out to you. But this one, normally I'd have the bookshop would be out a day, day or two early as well. But this is a big old bastard of, <laughs> of a podcast. So like I said, the video will be up over the weekend. So go to my YouTube channel for that one. Or no, sorry. Just go to the Patreon page. It'll be blanked on my YouTube channel. You won't see it. There's other stuff up there if you want. You know, barbecue videos, bits of stand-up, all the rest. There's a couple of taster ones of the interviews. So if you want to... Just give you an idea of what you're talking and what I'm talking about. Head over to Patreon. It's in the show notes, you know. If you don't feel like doing that, give it a nice rating. If you're at, I think you can do it on Acast now as well. I think you can rate and you might be able to rate on Podbean or one of them. I don't know. If you can rate on your podcast app that you're listening to, give it the five stars. You know what I mean? Maybe a nice little uh, comment there. It helps other people find it. That's the deal. And do me a favour. Whatever social platform you're listening on, Set it out to everybody else. You can follow me on all the usual ones if you don't already. Tom O'Mahony Comedy will find me pretty much everywhere. You know, you can follow Buckshot Podcast or if, like some people, you want to send me some long-form stuff, like a big old chit-chat, you want maybe some advice and stuff, send it to buckshotpodcast at gmail.com. Cool. Or send it long-form on uh, Instagram because I'm fairly regular there, you know what I mean? I, I'm only waffling. I'm only waffling. This podcast has been a long time in the coming. I spoke about this to the keen-eared person. I spoke about this a long time about about possibly breaking down the whole thing. Well, I would have done it in like you know, 40 minutes, half an hour maybe. Well, as you've probably looked at the size of the download on this, it ain't no 40 minutes. Out of the blue, pure fluke, Jerry McBride, formerly of... Now, we haven't, we haven't broke up. The band may still get back together if we ever have time to, to commit to it. That's the thing. Odd ones here and there, but you got to commit to it. The, of the Tom and Jerry show, where we did three seasons, which are all available on the Patreon 
page actually so feel free to skip on over there there's a couple up on the regular but uh, all of them are up on the full three seasons are up on Patreon but Jerry came to me with this and I just couldn't resist it was like absolutely so when we finally locked in we had to do this over two nights that'll tell you we had to do this over two nights because there was our minds were blown man our minds were blown this song has it invokes so many things and a lot of people you know yeah it's all jokey jokey to be from the country and all the rest of it because of course the greatest size population live in cities and they go oh yeah well yeah pff, whatever people are into that kind of thing this song actually speaks volumes to so many people but it's such a good tune too it's easy to just get along with it and it's a lot of fun and when you broke the whole thing down because Jerry has a history of this which we go into he did this amazing um, breakdown of uh, Regulate by Warren G and what's the other we talk, he talks about it basically and how he got into it and how he got an unbelievable traction on Twitter as a result of it so it made perfect sense to do this one and I have played the track slightly a little bit of it in, in it and I can't resist I, it'll probably get pulled off the YouTube channel where some people listen alright to the audio not the video and unfortunately it may get pulled but it won't it should it should be alright in all the other ones and I'm Listen, Marty Mons, uh, PR people or media people, uh, we're in contact anyway on other things, so it should be all good. So we go in depth, we break down the song line by line, word by word. Jerry is country, but he may not have the agricultural background. Now, I to anybody listen to this who is up to their elbows in agri. You may, I'm stand. To, I can stand to be corrected on some of these things. So I will gladly, gladly take your your criticism if I've gotten something completely fucking wrong. Gladly, because there's a few old duck eggs in there that I'm going. I don't fucking fully know here, but Jerry looks like he. Because uh, you were looking into that man's eyes, he's going. Tell me, Tom, what does that mean? And I'm going. I'm going to be an expert here, Jerry. So I bluffed my way through one or two bits. See, can you tell which ones they are? Um. This was some crack. Whether you are into this song or not, this was a good, good crack podcast. Hence why just two and a half hours just went click by on us. Uh, I'm not going to do an outro. I'm going to play the song at the very end. And so, once again, if you want a sports show, Patreon is there for you. There is also a merch shop as well, which is on T Republic. I put the, the, the link in the show notes if you feel like going supporting the podcast that way more power to you but just remember if it's your first time listen hit subscribe this is the kind of carry on you can expect once you go through the entire back catalogue but for now oh baby sit back put her in gear and enjoy the fantastic Jerry McBride on this very special Hit the Diff episode Um, welcome to a very special episode of the podcast. Uh, your host here, of course, is Mr. Tom O'Mahony. Joining me in the hot set is friend of the podcast, an actual real friend, not just saying it for the internet's case, the mighty man himself, Mr. Jerry McBride. Well, how are you keeping? How are you keeping, Tom? I'm, I'm all, very good, indeed. How are you doing? I'm all the better for seeing you. Snapsies on I, the old hoodie. Look at this. And, we, and, and I'm sure we've got like a... We've we've got blue underneath and everything. Look at this green green and sort of blue is in <laughs> is in the cupboard. That's what it fucking is, yeah. and it's the first thing you pulled out today. Yeah, your this one is, is and, and look, we've got we've got the, we've got the white cables going up as well. Wait. This is just like a fucking episode of Black Mirror, Tom, where I'm just trying to steal a podcast. You know, <laughs> you just <laughs> you show up with a fucking big old mustache now and a fucking camo hat. <laughs> People will start calling you Tom accidentally. Before I haven't I... got a mustache. I'll tell you what I've got, Tom. Uh, I see you've committed to the mustache for some time throughout this pandemic. Yeah, I've got just I've got just the right amount of stubbly beard that a mask will hold itself on your face, <laughs> like Velcro, without the thing going around your ear, and it just sits there steadily. In plastering terms, like you'd have to you'd have to scratch coat a wall before you'd be able to get the, the finish coat on it. Like, and so essentially, you you've just yeah. enough of a scratch coat on, like. I, I, I'm doing my part during all this time, but them masks is fucking cutting my ears off. So there, 
I'm going around with the fucking like this here. Uh, I, I can't begin with. I thought I was the only person. Like everybody else seems to be comfortable wearing them around the place, and I'm the only one that's like a cat flapping the back of his ears as I'm walking up the road. It's just like da 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 fuck off the back of my head. Uh, and the one uh, one, the one one could. I got that's supposed to be comfortable, it flops down around my chin shirt. Jesus Christ, it's a pointless lot of adventure. No man, I'm telling you, Tom, shave, give it a day, and just stick the mask to your face. You'll be fine. <laughs> so the whole reason for this is a, a, a joint love of a song, and this is a strange one in that. A lot of people would nearly make jokey jokey because it's nearly a jokey jokey thing to say that you're staunch culture, like. But sometimes you just can't deny yourself, really. Sure, you can't, like. We, we all know those lads that move to a city, Jerry. We all know those lads, don't we? And all of a sudden they shake off where they're from, and they start getting a new accent and all the rest of it. Oh, it, it didn't happen for us, and that's what that way, sure it didn't. And 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 you end up, you end up just kind of reverting back every so often. And this song, this song that you approach me with. This is this is this is the one, Tom. This is this is I have an unironic love for this song whatsoever, and and I'm I'm sure there's, you know, you know, people out here that would say, you, you, no, you like it jokily, as you said there yourself. No, I mean, like, I'm pretty sure every song has its fans, Tom. I'm pretty sure there's some people out there that unequivocally love the last ketchup song, you know, <laughs> not making shit up, you know. I'm I, I'm all right that I'm all right to dance to that shit, like five o'clock in the morning in the residence bar when I'm cut, all right? But I'm not just going to... But some people just love that last catch-up song. And you say it's not for me. But this next song, Tom, play it when they lure me into the ground. <laughs> you get a seven-gun salute and you get hit the fucking dip as you get dropped into hit the earth. The <laughs> you, you, well, we spoke today and that's your allegiance to it. You spoke today and you went, just to let you know now, Tom, I'm not taking the piss here. Like, I like this, you know, this, 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 I'm all about this song. Like, and I said, Jerry, I don't know if you remember or if you were gone home or you're too drunk. It was played at our <laughs> wedding. <laughs> or all those things. <laughs> <laughs> there was, there was a moment, there was a moment when uh, uh, there was a, an option, I think, on the, the invite, or maybe the, I can't remember where it was Natasha's idea. She, she was the creative brains behind the wedding, as the women tend to be. But there was an option to pick your song, pick your song uh, if you wanted right. a song played, you know, a request or whatever, somewhere to be written down and handed to the DJ. And jokingly, a chap that came back from the UK. Uh, one of our friends, he came back from the UK, he's from Navin, he's a farmer, and he went, oh, put Hit the Diff on. And I went, lad, oh, oh, oh. lad do you think that wasn't going on? And he, outside yeah. of his mouth, he was like, oh, thank God. Thank God I haven't heard that song played in a life. And it was really like a little bit of, little bit of home for him. I believe, I believe the phrase is put Hit the Diff on again. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a song that, like that, it is, it's, I think it's hit over 10 million views. Marty Moan, he's from your neck of the woods, roughly. Roughly speaking, he's from your neck of the woods, I believe. He's up that way. He, he's a, a trucking a truck gentleman. He's a, a trucking company and he, he has it out there an awful lot. He's the whole truck covered in all the bits and bobs. And I've spoken with his, his, his social media manager and about even getting him on the podcast. But the guy is so busy that he physically, it's like, and even during, during this lockdown, because, you know, there's certain lax ways of looking at it that he can physically play from the side of his own truck. He can arrive and not yeah. have to touch the ground. That man could just... Pull, pull the curtain back. <laughs> and all of us, as the curtain comes back, it's like... Di, 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 di. <laughs> <laughs> but the, um, big, the big thing about this song, Jerry, and I'd even thought about doing this at some stage, and I'd even spoken to the, but you know what's even better is the fact that you approached me and you said great ideas because there's so many words throughout this whole song that even folks from the countryside haven't a clue. There's a catchy tune and they may even get the words slightly wrong, but down to its core, because you've done this before, you've broken down songs before, you've got a huge traction for a song. That you, was it Warren G? Am I wrong? It was, yeah, it was Regulate by Regulate. Nate Dogg and Warren T. I love a song that tells a story, Tom, and uh, that you can get into it. And you can do this. Believe me, if you're in lockdown and you have nothing better to do, you can uh, bring up the lyrics to Regulate by Warren G and Nate Dogg. And it all fits into Google Maps. He's telling you exactly where he is. <laughs> you can put the wee man down and you can, you can find your way to the East Side Motel. Uh, <laughs> But it's all there. A little bit of detective work, but it's all there. 
And uh, and as you said yourself, Tom, uh, hit the diff is another one. It's it's a song about. <laughs> sh- sh- I mean, we we must admit, Tom, it's a song about a a very niche subject. <laughs> <laughs> you say niche, but there's there's it's, three million it's, it's rural not, people in Ireland, so it ain't that niche. But, but it's not your it's not your conventional love song. Uh, <laughs> no, no, it's not a conventional love song. I like the way you said conventional, no, it, but it's, it's still not a conventional it's, one. There's a form of love there somewhere, like it's 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 right there, and uh, y- you know, if 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 come out ye black and tans, come on, <laughs> you, you can you can find out what people are talking about there. Tell your wife you won medals in Flanders. Where's Flanders? And then you look it up, and it's all there. Oh, Flanders, right? Flanders is uh, World War One, and these black and tans were fighting in World War One, and they did very well in World War One. Well, let's <laughs> let's see how you do down around the lakes of Kilachandra, <laughs> which is in Cavan, which I wouldn't have thought would have had a high black and tan activity, but here you are, you know. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm sensing a team. Out. I'm sensing a team of a podcast coming up here. Where we just find songs yeah. that live. <laughs> Yeah, it's songs that come on at 2 a.m. in a nightclub, uh, <laughs> broken down. But Hit the Diff is, is the one, and I knew you were the man to ask, Tom, because whereas you're like, you know, uh, uh, an industry-leading cult sheet. Uh, <laughs> I, I, feel like, I feel like I'm cult adjacent at best. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. You know, I'm I'm like, you know, this is like this is this is like yourself being Roger Federer playing tennis against some lad that plays badminton the odd time. <laughs> you know, I, I can I can yeah, a racket and ball, I can swing. I kinda know what you're up to, but I'm really gonna need you to, to, to walk me through hit the diff because I can sing every line of this song, but I would be lying to you and your listeners if I said I know exactly what Marty Moan is talking about. Well, look, let's, I don't think we'll be able to play an awful lot of this without actually getting copyright pulled and all the rest of it. And I don't think even Marty Moon can actually give clearance on it. Normally it's a, a, his record company and whatnot. But we'll play bits and pieces of it. So uh, here I'll just play the chorus. Oh, hit the deaf and bread, that she goes all the way. When I'm flat to the mat with the party hat, some heading for the say. So I think that's gotten people nicely fucking lubricated up because we, immediately after this, I know for a fact at least 70% of my listeners are going to go and find this. Now, it has been, it has been, uh, it has been copied. A chap called Richie Ramo has actually copied it and he's cleaned it up way beyond. It's like you can't, sometimes you just can't. It's like, it's like driving a clean Land Rover. You know what I mean? You, you can't. It, it's, it's uh, I, I had a couple of people that said they didn't like hit the diff. And I was like, bitch, what? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> bitch, and they said, what? yeah, I don't like it. And, the, and, the, and they sent me the link of it. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? That's Richie Remo. That's not Marty Moan. And there is a difference. There is a difference. I'm terribly sorry. The Richie Remo version, and he seems like a nice chap. And I don't begrudge anybody making money for themselves. But it ain't it, man. It's not hit the diff. It's 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 not it. It's the boys' version of uh, it's only words. You know what I mean? It's yeah, 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 yeah. You it's, want the BGs, man? Yeah, you want the OG. Yeah, that's it. so. Do you know what? Let's let's uh, let's jump straight on into it. So you searched the uh, and you sent them on to me. You sent the lyrics. You did a course. Yeah. Let me just bring them up here in front. We, we've got we've, 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 we've we've a slight problem, Tom, because the lyrics are uh, Marty Moan, uh, easy to understand, young man. If you've got an ear for him, you know. Yeah, and uh, and I'd have it because yeah, I'm I'm from up that direction myself, and Tom, you have an ear for it as well. Uh, if that's been played into Google Translate or Google Dictate to write out the words of this song, <laughs> maybe not so. Much. But there was a lot of it that was sort of phon- phonetically translated from um, from from Marty Moan singing. So we, we've got what we think is the is the most complete version of the lyrics, and if it's not right, it's not far wrong. 
Okay, so I'll, I'll pull it up in front of you, you here. So, so, and I will share this with you now. So, here's the ones you sent on to me. So, do you want to talk us through the first couple of lines there? So, and uh, let's, or did you want, did you want to look at? Yeah, the, I'll tell you. The, I'll tell you what we'll do, Tom. We'll, we'll, we'll tell you what we'll do, Tom. We'll go. We'll, we'll go. We'll go line for line through this, and 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 stay with me. But Tom, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn to you. If we could imagine this was an exam, <laughs> I'll do my best. But every now and then I'll whisper over to you to 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 see what we're on. So. <laughs> The, the, the first problem, or, or rather the first mistake I made with this song, Tom, and for a long time, is that I thought it was all about the one subject, whereas in Ooh, actual fact, it's about... Right, yeah. right, yeah. I thought this was all about, I thought this was all solely about cut and sillage. Oh, right, 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 right. Well, I, and I think the most of it is. <laughs> the, the, the majority of it is. But, well, uh, as the song goes on, I believe he also goes into uh, re-sowing in the field as well, not just cutting. There's, there's quite a bit of uh, agri, there's even a bit of construction talk in there too. Um, but the, yeah. This is what this is all about. This is, this is where we, we find the paths to freedom in the way of uh, Hit the Diff, the, the gospel according to uh, fucking St. Saint, Saint Marty Moon. I mean, like even the first line, Tom, mowing, lifting, sowing and bailing. That's, you don't all do all them things on the one day, but you do mow. And if I'm right, Tom, walk me through this here now. Mm-hmm. Mowing is when you have a field of grass and you need to convert it into fodder for your cattle in the winter. So you need to cut that shit down and get it to a shed in one way, shape, make or form. Yes. Yes, 100% correct. This is the process to make in silage, right? Mm-hmm. Step one is to mow it, Tom. Now... For- it's been a while since I've been around Sillage. Right. But as I understood it, the last time I saw Sillage cut, and Tom, I was I had a lot more hair on my head than I have now. <laughs> I was only I was only a wee boy, but it was it seemed to me to be a three step process that you would cut it, a machine would come and cut it. Yes. No, oh, sorry, it was a four step process if I'm right. If I'm right. Now walk me through this. Mm-hmm. You, would, you would cut all the grass in your field with a machine, a big mower, looked like a big fucking lawnmower pulling out the back of a tractor and left you with just cut grass all over your field. Yes. And then another machine would come along and sort of toss that into rows. And it was like, it was like two whisks on the back of a, of a, of a, of a, of a tractor. Which, and it would we'll put it into rows. Now, I might be getting hay and silage mixed up here. You are, you are, you are, you are. You are. Uh, but then another machine would come and yes. suck it up. Yes, yes, big, suck it up. Thing. Yes, yes, yes. And, 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 and fuck it all into, a, into a, a, a tractor that was driving parallel to it. Exactly, yes, yes, yes. Now, yes. That, is if you're, that is if you're making a silage pit. If you want to make just one big fucking hunk of silage. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, to, to clarify this for any, anybody wondering what the fuck is he on about in the way of a pit, this cut grass, much like your lawnmower where you dump your grass you know, over your neighbor's wall, or it's your brown bin, <laughs> whichever. It is stored into this, into a tractor. Now, the process, uh, you've jumped over a couple of processes there in the way I of... Know, now, I'm also, also it, Tom, I swear to God. People south, people south of the Irish Mason-Dixon line call it silage <laughs> because there's only one L. But it's, uh, you'll be absolutely, you're fine because, um, you know, you're a Yankee and you're talking about, I'm talking Confederate talk here, like, but... There is a process in the grass trans- being transferred from the ground up through said sucking machine and into the tractor alongside where a, an as- acidity is added to that grass for preservative. What do we talk about this? Right, yeah. go on. So you'd often see the blue barrels. Everybody's seen these big 40-gallon drum blue barrels. They're plastic barrels. Yeah. They, they will fit directly onto one of these. It's the harvester that gets pulled behind the tractor. Um, yes, and, and the process it will pass through a spray. It's sprayed straight into the grass as it passes up through that conveyor, out through the chute, and in. And you'll smell it. There's an, an acidic smell off it. Cows love it. Also, there can be molasses added to it as well to give a sweetness to it. You'll see farmers when it does get back to the pit, which is exactly as it sounds. It's normally a three-sided, high-walled yard where yeah, 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 literally thousands of tons of grass are are stored. And you'll often see possibly the farmer's wife for the want of a better phrase, or the youth will be out with buckets of salt, sprinkling it over as well, just to, that added bit of, that added bit of uh, preservation 
as you would back in olden times with salt and pork and salt and fish and all the rest of it. It's the very same for the cow's uh, fodder. You see, I, I, I knew that there was something added to the grass to make a keep. That's as much as I knew. I, I didn't know that process was done in the, uh, in the... I didn't know it was done as the grass was being sucked up into the big giraffe neck, Tom. In fact, like, as I always pictured that in my mind, it was just, uh, uh, you know, you put all your grass in the pit and then the farmer went out with, like, a bottle of stuff, like, shaking back and just shook it. <laughs> like, it's fucking... Like a sack, like a Saxo table salt sized thing and just like shock it about the place that was my that was as much as i that's what i don't know where i've never seen that done just my mind made that up that that was what happened yeah it's not it's the it's the the least glamorous and most i suppose uh it's never spotted but you'll see those blue barrels around the place and they will clip now these days a lot of those are are those tom are those the blue barrels that you can sew on half and make a drinker out of if you're so inclined now you're talking about it. Yeah, now you're talking about it. Yeah, those are the exact same acid barrels. Yeah. I've never I've never seen one of those barrels in the shape of a barrel, but I, I know it like folded out like a butterfly to make a, to make two drinkers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So let's uh just to, just a recap. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we're fucking 20 minutes in we got as far as mowing and lifting <laughs> uh, so I suppose that well I mean the lifting is the lifting of it you know what I mean it's, there's, there's nothing more that's the, that's the giraffe neck of it it is it is but it's, it's I mean look the way the guy is, is using it you know sewing has no business in that sentence essentially if you are going well, to talk about this what you're is, this is what threw me because I'm like cause the rest of it is the mow it lift it bail it Bonk, bonk, bonk. I'm like, wait, no way. Oh, shit, Marty, you're throwing in a sewing in here. This is like a birth and death thing in the first line. It's like, yes, you, 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 you sew what you lift, you bail what you lift. You can't have life without death, Tom. This is some fucking Asamanya circle of life shit here. <laughs> no, no. Uh, Marty, Marty There's Moon, a song about sillage. Marty Moon has kicked Simba down the stairs here just to make a, a song that actually rhymes. <laughs> So, no, there is no circle of life here because the man has thrown in bailing into it as well. So you won't be doing any uh, lifting in the way if you're going bailing. You won't be doing much drawing. Right, see, into, into that's sex. two different things. And also uh, hauling, you're not really going to be hauling bales. Bales, people will see bales more often now because they are a lot more user-friendly in that you can just take one of these little giant you know, black puddings and take it out to a feeder in the middle of a field or whatever at a time rather than having to buy a whole new piece of machinery to go peeling back the giant piece of plastic that they put over the pit that we talked about. And so almost nobody does pits anymore. It's nearly always bailing nowadays, wrapped uh, black black plastic. You, know, you can see white ones and pink ones as well, but it's typically black plastic. And, and is there a benefit, Tom, to having little sort of nuggets of bales no little nuggets to the fucking height of a man uh against having a, a pit is it just like your own personal preference you can do whatever you want really can you you can but i mean realistically they're cost effective in that you've now cut off all the hauling so you don't need to bring a team of 10 tractors out or seven or eight tractors out to go hauling it with these giant trailers back to a big pit now it was always a great day on the farm when this would happen because every neighbor's hall is brought in. It was a great community event. It was, I mean, it was like Quakers or something. Um, you know, there was always food being cooked in the kitchen because the men would be on the job from five in the morning till 10 or 12 or one o'clock at night. But no, the round bales all round are far, far superior because also you can transport them much easier. A farmer can go and take one and go feed his cattle up the top of the field, you know, or he can move it around from place to place. Like, so it's, you know, you have to have one big desig- designated concrete yard. So if you're a new farmer or, you know, would need to, talk, it's a lot of money to put in one of these huge big concrete pits to take all yeah, this stuff. Oh, you know what I mean? And, and, and come here, out of curiosity, Tom, how many cattle would one bale feed for how long? Oh, Jesus Christ. I have... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Sorry, I'm like, and then I understand, like, you know, you're, like, you know, get used to this, Tom, because uh, uh, my, my kid is a little bit older than your kid. And uh, when your kid starts talking, this is what it is all fucking day. Is it? Is hey, this it? That, yeah. Hey, you see that thing over there that you've no expertise on whatsoever? <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and tell me every fucking thing about it? <laughs> you know, you start to make shit up, you know? 
One um, bale, one bale will, in, fill, will fill one of those round feeders, you know, the ones where cows can stick their heads through it. They're like a big old, uh, yes. you know, uh, hamster wheel turned on their side. It'll fill one of yes. those to the neck pretty much when you burst it open. And I guess, I maybe mean, I don't know, will 20 cattle get at it and do a good job of over a day or two? I don't honestly know. It's a, a good long while since I did any of that kind of business. Uh, so, we we'll move on. So the drawing and, and the hauling. The, the drawing and the hauling. See, I always would have said they were the one thing. Tom. They are. Right? They absolutely are. They absolutely, one would, you'd always draw silage and you'd always draw bales. You wouldn't really haul them. If you were hauling them, you'd probably be putting them on a truck. You might be selling a ton of good silage to the UK, which a lot of farmers do here, I mean, especially in the uh, south. They would, they would put it on a trailer and sell it to the UK. And now you're hauling when you've got a truck, you know. Yeah, Holland, Holland suggests a longer journey than drawn. Mm. Right? Yeah, drawn is typically from one of your fields back to your to farm. Your so you're probably talking base. a kilometer or two, you know what I mean? I can get that. Now, book raking, Tom. What are your to thoughts? What are your thoughts on book raking? My thoughts on, my, my thoughts on book raking is that it's not a thing. Like, it's a, like it's, it's a bit of, it's kind of doing the rule, yeah, if you know what I mean. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a phrase for when you're, uh, perhaps doing harm in a tractor, like when you're tearing up the tearing up the ground, like when you take a divot when you're playing golf. You know what I mean? Like if you take a divot out of the ground when you do a golf swing, you're like, oh, I'm buck raking there. Or it could actually be something very academic. Okay, well, let me just uh, let me just clarify exactly what it is, and I want you to just have a look at it this. It is a thing. It is a thing, Jerry McBride. Have a look at this. This is a buck rake. And if you want to explain it to the audio listeners who aren't watching the video here, what, what are you seeing, Jerry? What are you seeing on the picture? A book, you can buy a buck rake. You can buy a buck rake for either the front or the back of your tractor. And yeah, I mean, it does sound like a bit of an insult, no doubt. You, you fucking buck rake, you. you know, but it isn't. It's actually... Yeah, yeah, that's what I always thought it was, like you're gulping, you. No, it's actually a piece of machinery with forks sticking out the front of it, and it's for pushing essentially that big pit of silage that we were talking about. No, it's silage pits still go on. If your cattle are in close proximity, it's, it is a, the cheaper option than doing a huge amount of bales. But some big, big farmers, you know, if you have a thousand acres around you or 1,500 or 2,000 acres around you and all your cattle are in close proximity, a pit is probably the way to go. Well, fuck me. That is a book great gang. If you, uh, for for those of you not uh, looking at this on the podcast, it's after coming up on me thing. It's a uh, what is it, Tom? It's like a wall rid of fork. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a wall of steel put on the front of a track. It's like a snowplow with loads of teeth, spikes sticking out around the edges of it, the bottom and the sides primarily. It's so you can essentially push because the, the tractors can dump it into that area, but they can't really push it up into a nice neat pile. That thing will do a nice neat pile on the front of it. Well, Jesus, that's that's some machine, Tom. You see, this is why I knew you that this podcast had to be done. Uh, <laughs> here's me blissfully wandering through life, not knowing what a book rake was, and that's a book rake. That's a book. Excuse rake. me, can I have a look at the book rake calendar there till I see what I can see? <laughs> so that's, I mean, that's that's the explanation of uh, the book rake to be book raking. So it, uh, it, you can either go backwards or forwards with the thing. So it's it's for pushing essentially right so jerry we are the guts of 27 minutes 26 minutes into this and we've only gotten to book rake and i know it's interesting stuff isn't it well do you know what it is tom there's a lot i didn't know about agriculture <laughs> <laughs> but like we know marty's marty's a little all over the place for example his next line is back in stacking plow and crashing now you're not going to do all them things in a row tom hopefully no, that's, you're that's not a, that's not a Saturday job. That's that's several Saturdays across the course of the year, right? Yeah, you're spot. Like this is like the 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 the, the lifting and stacking. You know what I mean? You're stacking. You'd probably be stacking small square. I would stack small square bales. They call even though they are rectangular bales of hay or straw. You'd stack them. But you'd also stack round bales now. I've seen, I've seen round bales often if you'd be driving down the country and you'd see like a row of round bales and then another row of round bales on top of it. And then like, you know, um, <laughs> messages painted on the side of it as to who was and wasn't welcome on your farm. Yeah, feck off crows. <laughs> yeah, there's a great feck one off crows. outside. Uh, uh, Jesus, it's, it's the poor man's Killarney. It's down, it's a, still a great town in, in Kerry. And it's, it's famed 
And you'll see when they replace one, they'll have to type in right back in the E or whatever a feck off pros. <laughs> I would, I would, I would lean towards though. I rarely would you say I'm heading out to the field to stack a few bales there. It's almost, it's a, it's farming has gotten a bit fucking lonely. You know what I mean? Once upon a time, it took the neighbourhood. You know, like they say, a village to raise a child or whatever. It took a neighborhood to go stacking bales. You go stacking bales for a fucking for a week, you know. Yes. And it, but you would with round bales, you fuck off and you do it yourself. You can even draw the trailer into the field yourself. You scoop them up with your little forks at the front and you put them up on the trailer. You know, it's a it's a lonely old. It's it's not the crack it used to be. So I would I'd say Marty is harking back to the good old days. Even the small square bales are almost impossible to get nowadays. They've all gone yeah. big, big ones or big round ones. I've seen these big ignorant square bales and like, I don't know what it is, Tom. Like, I don't have a dog in this fight. I don't have a farm. But for some reason, when I see a square bale, I'm like, I don't fucking like that. I know. I know what you're saying. <laughs> I, 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 don't... I gave up farming a long time ago, but I'm still, I'm not okay with it. I'm not okay with it. I'm not okay. And, and, that's, like, no, it's... And, and that's why there is no fun to be had in them. You can't chuck them around. You can't make, see what you, Jerry, I know for a fact you went to local fields and you made forts with those small yeah. bales. Yeah. And even, even when it was the round bales, Tom, I swear to God, if you had a row of round bales and you could leap from one to the next like you were fucking Super Mario. Oh, Donkey oh, Kong crap. stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. On. Yeah, yeah. I that's, mean, that's... absolutely lethal if one rolled over to, you know, your neck or whatever. But, these, you know, this is a song. <laughs> there is no health and safety in this song. Yeah, basically, he thankfully he doesn't get it. His next one now is plowing. Now, like if I'm looking at him here saying plowing, like you're not plowing your field in the middle of the summer, Tom. So one has to assume that Marty's talking about the plowing championship here. Possibly. Po- no, that's going deep. I wonder, did he just swing it in there for alliteration? Did it fit? Well, uh, I'd I say would. Quite a, I'd say quite a lot of them. He did, Tom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> and just just to just to confirm the backing too. Typically, you'd be backing up silage. So that would be in the trailers again. That's that's cut silage. That's not bales. You'd right. be typically backing that up into the pit, which we discussed earlier in the <laughs> in the lecture. <laughs> this is fucking yeah, but like weird. At, at no point in the fucking silage making in the silage generating process do you plow anything. No, well, absolutely like, uh, not. No. I think we established in early doors, Tom, that this is not all about silage. Even though I was for many years under the impression that this was a silage song, it's not. Well, I mean, we'll get to the chorus in a minute, and really, that's the crux of it, is the, the line of the chorus. You'll see why it Very will good. refer to almost all of these activities. So as we all know, plowing, uh, if you are a tillage farmer, you won't do it for grass, for silage, because grass will fucking grow itself, unless you wanted to, unless you wanted to sow something like a different type of grass, that you'd bed out stuff growing, or some people go for ones like... Uh, they go for a type of grass. It's elephant grass is what it's known as. And you'll get nearly three cuts of it a year. Arguably, it's not as dense. But, you know, realistically, you'll only be plowing if you have wheat, barley, uh, rape, rape oil growing. You know, these kind of things. That's the only time you'll be plowing. And, and, plowing. and, you're, and you're, like, you're like, fuck all that. I want something else. Yeah, ex- that's exactly it. I, I need a new me. That's what I need. That's where plowing comes in. New me, and after you, new I'm, field. I'm, Who dis? <laughs> so this is your glow up when you play yeah. and, and, and barley but again like, well Marty's all over the fucking place because he's plowing he's plowing in line three but he's sowing in line one he's arse backwards here oh every which way because you would you'd sow then into said plowed field right um, and, well you'd harrow first to break break up those those lines that you that you peeled out of the ground with those blades behind the tractor you should have, you should have got harrowing in here Tom I, I, I cannot believe it's not in there I cannot believe it's not in there. I Trick would miss, but like if we if we know anything about Marty Moan, he probably has four other songs about harrowing. You know it. There's so it's much agriculture company. <laughs> harrowing the field. Oh, milk in the tit. All these. Har- it's like he will do harrowing, anything. Harrowing, yeah, harrowing is just spelled like I N apostrophe. No, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. <laughs> crashing is uh, so the line crashing, is back crashing. and stack and plow and crashing. Crashing is it goes with the territory. I've pulled down many up here myself. And uh, typically contractors, they're okay with it. Their insurances are huge because you will, you will just by, you know, by default, you're working 14 hour days, you're young, you're dri- probably driving too fast, or you just don't know what size of the vehicle you're driving and you eventually will slap it into something. So the crashing is... The, the, the thing, the thing that, I, that always gets me is when you're, when you're, 
when you're drawing bales from fields next, like the, the the width of the load tends to vary because, like you know, you have your you have your, you have your um, flatbed trailer or what have you. But yeah, I'm getting these all wrong, Tom. I can tell by the look on your face there. You're just sort of going like McBride is out of his depth here. <laughs> I like the way it's going because this is, you know, there's other people who will be listening to this right now who even know far more than me are going listen to these two fuckwits. And but you're. <laughs> Making well, me like, look- I, I put it to you like this: when I'm dri- when I'm driving my car, I know the width of it. It's like a cat in the whiskers, you know. Mm. I know where it's going to fit, and I know where it's not going to fit. But like a trailer load of silage bales uh, could be a little bit wider one one trip than it would be the next. So I don't know how these lads aren't just like whipping piers out of it left, right, and center. Yeah, I, honestly, phenomenally talented, and they love it. You know what I mean? They absolutely love, and they will. You know, they have. You see, you, the, the, the trick to getting good at driving against ditches is driving without consequence, i.e. the first couple of cars you buy aren't worth more than fucking 200 quid. So <laughs> you end up knowing. Do you get what I'm saying? So these lads have driven through gaps from one field to the next. So there are gaps and hedges. So if you fucking pull down a bit of a fucking old gate post, well, no what biggie. Odds? So you do that a couple of hundred times, you know the width of your trailer, regardless of how it changes. Because... Chances are these days you've probably loaded that trailer too because the front of the tractor will have a set of prongs on it for picking up said round bales. Of course. You'll have brought the trailer with you, loaded again, again, the lonely life of a contractor. This is all coming up, Tom. I know. <laughs> the loneliness of the long distance. Do you know what? Here. I hope Marty listens to this and goes... I really hope he does. He'll have six new songs out of the shit we're talking right now. Anyway, the loneliness of I hope he, I, I hope he listens to all this like just absolutely furious because he missed <laughs> all the metaphors. <laughs> he's you know he's at home going like, no, this is a song about Bosnia. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you pick up on the, 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 the... This is a song about the fall of the Czech Republic. <laughs> this is the Moldovan you fuckers, struggle. How you, you fucking fuckers just idiots. Took it, you, you idiots took it at face value. <laughs> I want to see this song go to the Eurovision. I swear to God. Oh, it my God. Amazing. Uh, tip and so, rapping, Tom. Tip and rapping... Tip and, next line is tip and rap and tail doors flapping. And anytime I'm singing this song and anytime I sing it, it's when it's on because I don't not sing this song. <laughs> the tail doors flapping is the bit where I always give it a wink. I'm like, tip and rap and tail doors flapping. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is really, he, he is bang on the money here. Like that's a nice little line from anybody's, you know, that's probably, I would imagine one of his favorite lines in the whole thing because you look through it, you'll, you won't get that. You just won't get that rhyming just no, off the tongue. Didn't. Uh, I, mean, yes. I, I know I know the tipping like tipping is when you tip something up that's alright and wrapping it I always if anybody has never seen a round bale get wrapped Ooh. look it up on YouTube get, I mean, get on it right it. now get on it right mesmerizing. now mesmerizing we're talking like two ton of grass spinning like a fucking <laughs> basketball on someone's finger while being while being cocooned it's like when uh, it's like in Lord of the Rings when the big spider came down and, and, and wrapped its photo. <laughs> Only it's fucking a two-ton ball of grass. Just <laughs> it, it's it's fucking mind blowing, Tom. Well, do you know what's interesting too? If a crow were to pick, that's that's why a lot of people are changing from uh, black plastic, even though it's the cheapest. They're changing to white or pink because crows are attracted to to flappy, shiny black plastic. Now, if a crow, a crow pokes all the way through because it'll end up being maybe I don't know how many layers are on it. But, it, you know, it wraps and wraps and wraps and wraps. Let's say there's seven or eight layers of plastic over this thing, which, by the way, is all typically collected by all farmers. They're all incentivized to collect it nowadays and okay. send it for recycling, in case okay, anybody's right wondering where. Yeah. Um, and wrap and recycling. It, it doesn't... It doesn't... It doesn't fit, no. No, you Isn't can't even... Leave this to Marty. He's, he knows way more than it. Way more. But uh, if, say a crow picks all the way through in one little hole, yes. it will rot in one direct right, yeah. line all the way through. Um, that's why you'll often, you'll often see uh, like large farms and stuff like that. They'll have the likes of, of you'll hear what almost sounds like gunshot going off every so often. And it isn't a gunshot. Yes. It is the makings of a bullet, but without the actual projectile. And you'll, a lot of wheat, uh, wheat farms will have these too, where yes. it'll just bang, will go off, crows everywhere. And crows, just after a while, they're smart, they'll stay away. They don't know whether it's a gun or not, they'll just stay away. Some people even employ a hawk for a week or two. To to skate around. Mm -hmm. To keep them clear. That's, I I, I, I do do know the banger you're you're talking about. We just called it a banger, or there's a banger going off. Yeah. It's a thing that just, 
it's it's like a, it's it's like you know if you, you know <laughs> it's it's what should have been the scarecrow in in the scarecrow in Wizard of Oz. You know, I don't want to see this guy made of straw come to life and want to get a brain. I want to see this fucking sentient robot shotgun. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Just shooting blanks everywhere. I'm, I'm shooting blanks. I gotta go to the wizard and learn how to not shoot blanks. And then he just at the end of the wizard is just like you could you could fire all along and the and the robot robot, robot shotgun is is just like <laughs> fucking guns for fingers and blast and flaying monkeys out of the sky. That's the end of that movie I want to see. I just wonder what way Wurzel Gummidge would have gone if that was the fucking case. <laughs> <laughs> I like a slice of tea and some, you know. Yeah. And some 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 double out. Come here to me. Taildoors flapping is the one that there's something really nice about taildoors flapping because that's when the that's that's if I'm right, that's when you're 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 you, you tip out your grass mm-hmm. and you, your door is is rigged in such a way that it, it hinges like a cat flap only exactly flap from the top. You're spot on. That's twelve foot wide by twelve foot high. Uh-huh. And you empty out your grass and you empty out Everton and there's just this little moment where your tail door sort of flaps in the wind like a dog wagging his tail. Yeah. And that's when you're Okay, that's one job done. We're done. Yeah. We've no grass, and my tail door is just flapping like a dog wagging his tail, and everybody's happy. And that's what do you do then, Tom? Yeah, fucking go do it again. Exactly. Once she drops all the way down, that you see that hydraulic ram dropping all the way down, and just swing in the wind nice, and then boom, nice. ting, 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 clip, and it just clips. There's no getting back and out. Off we go again. There's no getting back out to hook it back up again. It's it, it'll clip itself. It lo- it's it's a, a latch of sorts. So yeah, it's that moment you're like fucking lovely. Didn't kill anybody. Great. Yeah. That's big. Ba- uh, we're, we're here now. We're 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 at the height of the swing. We're not going up. We're not going down. We're just like, and now we're off again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I go. I feel that man. I feel when the, when Marty sings "Tail Doors Flapping." I feel that shit. Do you? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Isn't that funny how that's just like almost by osmosis through it, like he really, I think that's the poetry of Marty Moon's writing, is that even you weren't fully sure, you were, you know, if I told you, you know. was something else right now, you'd go, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, if you were to turn around to me and go like, oh, actually, that's like a, the tail door's a little valve in the end. <laughs> oh, don't when worry. You're crew, when, we, when you're we're getting, a 3, off, you know, oh, we're, we're pretty God. literal so far, to be true, to be true to the, to the song, we're being pretty literal. Things are going to get fairly weird in a while. <laughs> uh, they get well, this next one, Tom. This next one. Uh, uh, speaking of fucked up, this next phrase here now. This next line uh, of Marty's, yeah, um, contains a phrase that I think is going to need to be pulled out a little bit. Mm. Sucking diesel. Yeah. Now yeah, you're yeah. sucking diesel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tom, I've I've been hearing of people sucking diesel for for thirty five of my forty years. And it's if a I, phrase if, if that honest, will never go out of, of fashion. It will never go out of fashion. I, I, I don't know where it came from. I, I, I mean, for the longest time, I thought it was like you were siphoning off diesel. You see, you're from Monaghan, Jerry. It. You have to remember that. You're from Monaghan. Where it's you should fucking know, right? He could actually be called County Diesel. That you could actually be called, <laughs> count, change, drop the Monaghan on Weenie or whatever you are. Just call it fucking Diesel County. That'd actually Dieselland. be a great name for Dieselland, yeah. <laughs> Dieselland. That, re- Diesel. that big seven-foot wrestler, he retired to fucking clone us. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm playing to my audience right here, right now. You're going, mm, more wrestling talk, Tom. <laughs> oh, shit, <laughs> Tom. Uh, you've been doing your research, too. Uh, <gasps> But, but it's it's not it's not sucking diesel as in I'm I'm sucking no, diesel to no, rob, no. I'm rob, not robbing diesel so that now I have more diesel. But that would also work, I suppose. But it really, this is, it, 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 it let me let me let me tell you let me tell you what I think it is, and and then you can tell me how far wrong I am. Yeah, I'm assuming that the faster you're driving, the more diesel obviously you're going to use in a one hour period of time, and therefore the diesel is gushing through your engine quicker than it. Normally would so your combustion engine brought, brought to you by Team McBride. <laughs> <laughs> you got a regular Henry Ford over here. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm. What do you say? Me. I'm about to invent this new diesel engine, star. 
Good lord. <laughs> you know, feel free at any stage, Tom, to jump in here and I was trying to actually just I was, was trying to catch you in the proverbial headlock there for a moment. It's, just quite you know, it's obvious that I haven't a fucking clue here. So no, lay it on me, Tom. You, what, no, what you're a hundred percent right. It is, but you it, not just in the case of every form of machinery that you're driving, whether it be digger dozer, tractor truck, once you're hauling big weight you're going to be sucking, de- you're going to be drawn diesel like a fucking bastard. You you're know what I mean? You're burning it's, through it. You're burning through it. Like, and uh, it's, it's never almost described as burning. It's, uh, you know, even though technically that is what you're doing, it's always like sucking diesel because these, these machineries are, they've, they've a life of their own. Do you know what I mean? They yeah. come, become part of the person. So the, the machine is sucking diesel. You're both sucking diesel. And that's quite, and also when it comes some of the older machines, you'd hear it coming close to the end of the tank and you would hear it go, <laughs> and you don't want to ever get to that, that one you just did. You never want to get there because all the filth at the bottom would get dragged into the filter. That's a ball burst, game over. Thanks for the use of the haul. New I filter. New filter. That, I was always told that when my dad, like, you know, because I'd be like, oh, the orange light came on in the car. I've got another 50 miles I can drive around this thing. But yeah. my dad always said, like, you know, uh, don't, drive your car down to the ashes because you're just drawing up all the shite at the bottom of the tank. Shite. Diesel especially is filthy. The, well, filthy is, it, there's a lot of sediment in it because it is a denser material than petrol. And okay. hence why it's cheaper because it hasn't been refined as much as petrol. It burns at, a, at it doesn't burn as, a, as hot as petrol is. That's why you race cars with petrol and high octane fuels in them. But what it does is it has a stronger combustion in that it offers more okay. torque. That's not just for the Jesus Christ Almighty! Here we are again. We're we're oh, what? Shit. We're already fucking like half an hour in. I'm, I'm, I'm getting into talk. Let's move on. Let's no, move on. Good. But long and the short of it, when you say you're sucking diesel, that means your engine is sucking diesel out of the fuel tank very quickly. Exactly. It's drinking your, it's drinking your milkshake. And exactly. Getting it off of it. If you're sucking diesel, you're working hard, basically. And 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 okay. And then cutting is cutting and trucking. We've already. I mean. Marty, you've you've already drawed, hold, you know, yeah. you've, you've drawed this silage, you've hauled this silage, and now you're trucking this silage. All right, we get it, Marty. You're taking it from one place to the next. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so, uh, so sp- spreading piping, double clutching. Now, this could be a podcast in itself. You have <laughs> no idea, GMAC. You have no idea the depth of this line. Um. Now, now, let me let me get this straight, Tom. I always thought is 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 spreading and piping two separate things. Yes, it's not. Um, he's not spreading piping because I want to talk to you about that. Let's hear it. Let's hear what you think spreading piping is. I always thought that when you were spreading piping, was when you had the machine that spread out the the the, the plastic that you sew things under. You know the you know you might see it in a field at a certain time of year. And it's like sheets of plastic yeah. that, that stuff grows up through. And then the plastic itself biodegrades away to nothing. It's like, a, and, 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 and for some reason, Tom, and nobody told me that. I always thought that stuff was called piping. So I'm spreading piping. I'm spreading like this little uh, polyurethane tunnel type of, type did, of did you Did you go into the, like, the bakery section of this song? I don't know where you found piping, but I love it. I love that. I just, I just, because, because, because we, and it's probably because the, the mushroom houses and things like that when we were up home, we used to call them tunnels. Yeah. Well, they was are it, tunnels. Was a tunnel. yeah. It was a tunnel, right? And if you had like a greenhouse at the back, it was a tunnel. And these other things just looked like s- smaller versions of that. The, the, you know, the, the, they put a, 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 a track That's what it that is. Wide. Yeah. 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 It's normally, so I, it's think, I think it's like potatoes a, typically they do, they right. do under so those strips. Like a, yeah. It's just like a smaller tunnel. And then I just put tunnel and pipe together in my head. And you were spreading pipe and you were spreading this fucking shimmy. I, I'll be honest with you. I didn't grow up in a tillage area. Um, the County Mead would be a big tillage area. There'd be parts of temporary, right, yes, west temporary as, they, as you head for Kilkenny or heading for the sunny southeast. Some of those parts would be where O'Donnell's crisp would come from would be head right, for so tillage I, area. And, and I see it going up the N2 going up home anytime I'm going up home. When you fly in, when you fly into Dublin Airport, you look down, you, you see in, all yeah. these little shiny lines. Now, I don't honestly know if that's called piping. I read that as two different words. Uh, Spread, spreading, so, spreading and piping. Spreading, spread, spread and slurry. Spread and slurry. But also, Jerry, hang on to your hat. Piping slurry. 
Can you pipe, sorry? Because I think this is a setup for a callback later in the song. Okay. So pipe and slurry. Now I should have actually, I, I thought I got these pictures together for you to show it to you, but I... That's okay, I, don't worry. I'm painting a metal picture, come. So there are two forms of piping. You know, everybody knows spreading slurry. Everybody's seen slurry tanks. They come typically... Every, if, if, you, if you haven't seen it, you've smelled it. Yeah, they come typically 1,600 litres up to, fuck me, three and a half thousand for those big monster fucking trucks and those big monster, uh, whatchamacallit, fields. Typically, the average one would be about 2,200. You go to a pig farm. Pigs. Do, okay, if we don't, what, will I explain where slurry comes Sorry, from? It's, 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 it's pig shit. Common. It's yeah. pig shit. But yeah, okay, it's gotten from underneath slatted units, anyway, from pig. So they spread it on a field because it's a great fertilizer. Gotcha. Not long, Circle of life, Tom. Not long after cutting silage. It's often a good idea to get it onto your field, which it is illegal in this country to, to spread it during the rain because of runoff, top of the soil runoff right. into rivers and streams. Okay, and that's bad. Oh, well, it'll contaminate whatever's in there. You don't want, I mean, those oh, rivers and streams. Nobody often, wants shit in the water, Tom. They, you know what? I mean, it's a phrase for life, Jerry. Nobody wants shit in the water. Don't muddy the water. And that, that phrase, I believe, means San Diego. No, um. <laughs> It got now some smart, very smart people sought to and in certain counties you can't even spread on certain days. Uh I don't know if religious or what, but on certain times you can't spread and all the rest of it. So very smart people, two ways of piping. So we'll go through the one that is still spreading, but it's piping. Right. Okay. So this is known as an umbilical cord. So you have a tractor. Say around the farm, right? Around the pig farm has 200, 300 acres of grasslands that needs to be spread with slurry. Now they figure, why would I bring a slurry tank in to haul it from that out to that field, back to the tank, out to that field? So the notion being that what you'll do is you'll sit a tractor, put its tractor power and a motor at the tank and a huge big umbilical cord i.e like a three inch flexible pipe will attach to the back of another tractor he will drag it out into those fields he'll have a mini mini motor at the back of his tractor spreading said slurry all across the field dragging it back and forth without ever having to return he's basically getting the shit piped to it that's umbilical cord spreading right Do you, can, can you get what i'm saying can I mean like I've never seen together the bits in me and I think I have it but it seems like a way to get shite into your field Tom now here's where we get real intricate this is the other type of pipe and slurry (laughs) 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 so now you have a tanker on the back, or you may have the same umbilical system can be set up close to the tank, pumped out. But instead of just spreading it out on the field, they have, the, they have I don't know how many, let's say two dozen injectors that actually pump it down into the ground. At, uh, I don't know what the, bit, what the measurement is, but they will pump, well, let's say it's every two foot, they'll jam it into the ground, pump a shot in. Jam it into the ground, pump a shot in. And so on and so forth. So you never actually smell a slurry from that field. It's all under the soil. That, well, holy shit. And whose experience of this was seeing like a, a big fucking barrel with two wheels being drawn behind a tractor and just shit being put 50 feet into the sky. Mm. This all seems like very scientific. You would not believe the level. I mean, this song doesn't do farming justice at the minute. Have you been to the Plowing Championship of late? No. Oh, my fucking Jesus. It oh, is. Tom, like, you know, forget about it. Like I, it. like, I seen a tractor the other day with an iPad in it, and I was like, what the fuck am I looking at here? Because I, that... I, I remember when I was small, a fancy tractor had a cab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, where, who does he think he is with a fucking roof on the tractor? Yeah. Yeah. So... Now these things have, like, like, captain's chairs, like the fucking bridge of the Enterprise, you know? 
so the the yes, yeah, so, I mean you'd, you'd see these things that would blow your mind. I have a cousin. He's a doctor of uh, oh, what is it? He's a doctor of some sort of robotics, anyway, and he works for Chagas developing these crazy fucking things. Like, I mean, if you think your phone and your car, people forget like that, oh wait, one third of the country's coffers comes from the agricultural industry. If you think what, right. you're, what you work in has high tech, oh my fucking day, oh my days, <laughs> oh my days. This song, God bless it, but it is entry level. It is entry level for people learning about agriculture. It is astronomical the level of tech that is in farming nowadays. I, I, I'd imagine that like, it's like, like, you know, the way the military gets the best of everything, like, you know, the, 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 the military grade communications and all this kind of thing. I'd only imagine like mili- that uh, agriculture is only one step right beside it. Oh, it, it gets all the moo. It gets all the moolah. So you're, you're, so those are the three forms of, from what I know, I stand to be corrected. You might be 100% right. There'll be farming chaps listening to this going, for fuck's sake, Tom. But those are the three forms of spreading and piping. So you have umbilical, you have injection, and you have straight up tanking. Now. What? Um, <laughs> I know. <laughs> All for shit. <laughs> That that's I, I don't know what to tell you, Tom. Like honestly, I, I, honestly, uh, I really just thought it was like fill a tank with shit and go out and, and, and spread it behind you. Yeah, you would, wouldn't you? Well, and then, yeah. now that you've told me that that's illegal, Tom, I'm like I've got a couple of boys to report. <laughs> <laughs> now this is where the next part of that sentence, uh, this line. So spreading pipe, double clutching. Do you well, know double what double? Cl- you do know what double clutching is. You've seen no, Fast and I the don't. Furious. I, I, this is, I was just going to say Fast and the Furious, that, the, that anything I know of double clutching comes from, from Fast and the Furious. Is there's a line in, 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 in Fast and the Furious where he goes like, uh, uh, in the first movie, and if you ask me how I know this so off by heart, I used to work in a place that sold tellies and the Fast and the Furious was like the only DVD we had. And, and like, I honestly watched that first movie like fucking... Um, like honestly 600 times SWAT came into my house disrespect my whole family and it was you to run and I'm like and it's that, like I've watched that thing like a fucking thousand times I close my eyes I see it playing right and in that uh, Brian uh, Paul Walker's character God rest him uh, burn, burns his car out racing against Finn Diesel and uh, you know he's all happy at the end of it and he's like I nearly beat you and all this kind of thing and Vin Diesel's like you never nearly beat me because you were granny shifting not double clutching when you should have and I'm like I don't understand the fucking half of this you know but here's Vin Diesel a 40 year old man playing a 22 year old fucking DVD robber so I'll take his fucking word for it like <laughs> essentially what double clutching uh, it is exactly that it's dipping the clutch twice in but only changing that gear once. But why so you would did, you do that? Because what it does is it allows the engine speed to catch up with your gearbox speed and there's a faster synchronization. So you actually end up, if you can do it really quickly, the gear change that you're not seeing underneath your feet and in the in around the engine bay is actually happening much faster if you can double clutch correctly. All right, so let's 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 just let's just double clutch real quick here, Tom. Okay, so I'm mm-hmm. driving my car. Okay, so yeah. we'll just we'll, we'll drive a car first, and I'm assuming we'll translate it to tractor because I'll, <laughs> Tom, I've I've tried to do this in the car. Of course, I think, of course, we all. I think all. one of the reasons why I failed is because I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. It, it so was it wasn't in the Citroen. Yeah, it wasn't the Citroen. Yeah, listen. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it I'm going to be honest with you. It wasn't come entirely the, your fault. <laughs> come, come the end of the day, come the end of days in the Citroen, uh, that thing would go from from second to fifth in one go without touching the clutch whatsoever. <laughs> well, that kind of leads us to why Marty would be double clutching. We're talking about double clutching for race reasons here now, but this explain. Right. We'll explain it. We'll so, explain why he's doing it. Okay, yeah. so I'm driving. And in, in a conventional, on any given day, if I want to go from third gear to, to fourth gear, mm-hmm. I'm driving, I would take my foot off the accelerator, put my foot down on the clutch, go from third to fourth, and then reverse the process. Clutch up, accelerator down, and drive. Exactly. So That's, that's how I would drive. And yeah. Yeah, i got to be honest with you, Tom, it's been doing me fine. 
I never didn't get where I wanted to go. Yeah, I never. Yeah, I won't yeah. say if only this process was slightly more complicated and would fucking send me back to the future or whatever. Well, so, okay, so so you, you you walk me through how you double clutch from third to fourth. Double clutch. So same process. You can make noises if you want. <laughs> so that was the clutch for everybody listening. So <laughs> you're clutch, deaccelerate clutch at the same time. So that's your movement. Take her out of gear. Okay. You will now clutch again. And then you'll dip the accelerator ever so slightly, which ca- causes the engine speed to pick up, <clears throat> catch up, and synchronize quickly with how your gear linkages. Now, only a good ear will do it for racing. You'll hear it, and you'll go, oh, here she is, bang, bang her in. So now you've clutched twice, revved, revved once, got her into gear, and then you're back down revving again. So you clutch, take her out of gear, clutch again, rev a little, bang her into gear, and then you're off, back on the accelerator again. Okay. So the idea being, it's... it's, it's but to, so, what, to what end, Tom? It's, it's, I, it's, I, I, it's to speed your, it's to speed the engine up. It's to basically tell the engine, can I catch up to fuck with the gear, gear or the, to synchronize with your gear linkages movement. That's what it is. It's it, ca- it sounds like a fucking wonderful way to burn a clutch out. Oh, abs- it absolutely will. It absolutely fucking will. Like, but... What you're doing is you're forcing it to catch up, and a good ear will hear it synchronizing in and go clunk, and then you're off. You haven't lost any lag. You know what I mean? You haven't lost any. Oh, right. You yeah. haven't lost that little sort of. Mm, exactly. Mm, where, where it doesn't, you won't normally feel it in the car, you know, as you're clipping down a motorway, you won't right. really feel it. But if you are really horsing down the fucking road, say you're doing a ton 50 mile an hour, and you go from third to fourth, like you, like you said, if there's two seconds being lost in that gear, uh, like you may get it done in a second, but by the time the clutch and the gear and the engine have caught up with each other, another second is probably lost. Right. And when you're Paul Walker or Vin Diesel, you can't be fucking losing seconds. You know what I mean? When you're, you're, when it's, when, when you're living your life, life a quarter mile at a time, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Toretto way. You know, it always has been. <laughs> now, the, <sighs> the reason why a man would be double clutching in agricultural terms would be going back to the tractors you're talking about with no cab the old Ford counties things where the clutch is kind of half fucked so now what you're going to do is you're going to go through the same process probably to slow yourself down but what you're doing is you're dipping it as hard as as many times as you fucking can and trying to catch the engine up to to the so you don't really need the clutch do you get me so you're pulling it out of gear a lot of the time I've I've been in tractors with older guys and they'll be fuck all clutching it. But what they'll do is they'll get the engine revs just up and they'll go bang. And they'll bang it from say second to third because you've got, what you've done is you've gotten it to synchronize. You've gotten it to mesh. Right. At your, if they're both rotating at this, so they're going like this. One is going slightly slower than the other as I'm spinning my fingers here for the audio listeners. And then you, <laughs> if you rev the engine up and she catches up, oh, now you're into the same. Now bang. you're into same. And then, okay. Bang. So you put double clutching is the notion that you would be able to try and do it because probably a few bits are fucking missing out of your gearbox is what, what you're, what you're in need of. You, you're probably missing your synchro, which a lot of trucks have a synchronization system because they have a high box and a low box. Like Paul Crowley, a uh, comedian and trucker will tell you, he will agnose him, on, will, will talk at length and at, about uh, the different, the different types of gearboxes you'd have in trucks. It's a kind of a trucking term more than any, more than it is a tractor term, really like, to be honest with you. All right. So, so, so Marty's not double clutching here, you know, in a, in a bid to get this field mode in a quicker or more efficient way. He's double clutching because he's. What he's driving is fucked. Basically. (laughs) Double clutching because he fucking has to. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, Okay. I mean, there you go. I think that's the technical. We've got two more lines in this verse, and I think that's the technical stuff gone out of it. The rest of it, I yeah, think... We're getting you... it. I mean, the, techni- the next line is fairly straightforward. I don't think we need to go line by line with it, Tom. Spinning, sliding, digging, rigging. Now, rigging might be the best. Spinning, sliding, yeah, you're going to spin and slide a little bit now. But of course you are. This, this is, the, you know, uh, now that we're spinning and sliding and digging, Tom, that's going to get us to why a reason uh, someone might hit a certain button in a little second here. Uh, but uh, rigging... He's rigging something, isn't he? 
Yeah, I mean, rigging could be also a term for, you know, you're driving your big rig. I mean, a lot of the lads... Yeah, maybe, from, maybe from he's the, on a the northern pirate end of ship for all we know. A lot of the lads, yeah, he's fucking running up the rigging. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, your, <laughs> he's an old blue coat from back in the day to sales. But it's, it's uh, a lot of the lads in the northern counties tend to call their trucks rigs. Right. You know, they do still have CDs. They, they are living the eastbound down. You know, they're, you know... If it if if it works, yeah. I, li- hey, listen. That's where now we can get into a whole other thing. We can talk about the where where the origins of country music actually came from and bluegrass actually came from, and why those people are known from the Virginia Hills as hillbillies. I bet you can't guess why they're known as hillbillies. Uh, I Go can't on, take a step. I, I think we, I think there's a song here is kicking her ass at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, hill, hillbillies. Uh, I don't know where where the billy come from. The hills. If they're if they are from the hills, then where the billy come from? King William of Orange. And I, oh, how the fuck did he get over to America? He didn't. But his uh, his followers of whether they be in a, it's what do they call them? Scots Irish or Scots Northern Irish Scots, as well as Protestant uh, Northern Irish people absconding to the Appalachian Trail. Well, there they, you go. And they brought their music with them, which, you know, living that long in the mountains ended up being bluegrass, which went on to become country. And they which, became known as hillbillies. Hillbillies. There you go. Well, there you go. I mean, I think it's amazing that they became known as hillbillies over there. And here in Ireland, the followers of uh, William of Orange have no nicknames that I know of, Tom. <laughs> Moving swiftly along. <laughs> Uh, so. Rare and tearing, losing, winning. I think that, like you know, he's just in, he, he he's just like really just thrown his hat down and said, right, fuck it, we're part of this world here. Yeah. We're raring to go. <laughs> we're gonna tear into this. Some you win, some you lose. You know what we need to do right now, Tom? It's the. Yeah, no, it's, I'm gonna. I'm before we actually. Uh, I need to put oh the brake the brakes on you there, Jerry, because I there's a dispute here I'm having. Um. I've listened to it over again today because I thought I was losing my fucking mind. But I think this was the the the, the lyrics are wrong. I I don't this, think this I Google, don't think it's Google, uh, Google uh, phonetically listening to a Monaghan man and, and and not. I I think I think he's losing weight. He's losing fucking weight somewhere. Heading to a way. No, what time? Heading to a way bridge. He's fucking shitting it because he's at forty two tons or something like that. And he's like, I, oh man. I, 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 I actually, now that you say that, I have, I have actually picked that up a little bit in it, that he's raring, tearing, losing weight. Yeah. I have heard that. I, 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 you're, you're talking about when he's going to a weigh bridge that he's intentionally losing weight. Yeah, i.e. fell off the back of a truck. You know, I once came around a roundabout on the, the day of the Christmas holidays uh, when I was in, in the building game. And I had two junior engineers with me. And we came around a roundabout at the Bandon Road roundabout in Cork. And a Mr. Kipling's truck door flew open, literally flew open, just as we were exiting the roundabout. And French fancies and custards and all sorts <laughs> were strewn all over the road, Mr. McBride. Well, I tell you, he was I thought, losing. I thought, I, thought, I thought all sorts were Barrett's, not Mr. Kipling. Oh, well, I, no, sorry. Oh, Jesus, well, I'm sorry. All sorts of histories. <laughs> I'm sorry. I beg your pardon. And we sco- I got sent to two, but I said, get the fuck out. What for? It was like seven o'clock. And I'm like, get out and get every one of those fucking, get every one of those. Because your man just drove on and pulled in up further and he was like, waved okay. his hand at the situation. I, I, I think, I mean, you could, be, could losing, be you could be losing, you could be losing stuff off the back. I mean, Truckers see, all I, the time I, I, lose stuff off the back ever, of their truck. But if you've ever driven behind like a fucking lorry lo- or a trailer load of silage, of loose silage, it, it, it sort of spills out the back. Like it looks like water just falling out of it. You know, it's it's constantly spilling out of it as they're as they're driving along behind I, the back. I, I don't think it's actually. I don't think it's an item. I don't think it's it's a harvested item. I I think he would have said it otherwise. I genuinely think he switched over into truck and here. And he's like, I need to get fucking it. I've got, I'm two tons over, boys. I need to get this off before I hit the Weybridge because I'm going to get fucking goosed. I mean, um, it's, 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 it's very possible that's what it is, Tom. Uh, and we've, we've, we've commended Marty Moon's songwriting abilities up to this point. But if that's indeed what it is, uh, he missed the trick by not just saying lose and winning. Because <laughs> that's fucking again, sitting right there. <laughs> I'm prob- I may be totally wrong, but I hear, I hear 
losing weight and we might be looking into it might be losing winning but we'll, we'll park it where it is and we'll go on into where uh, where dreams fucking, happen do you know what Tom the last thing we want to do here is overthink this song <laughs> We say that fucking nearly two hours into. We say that two hours in, and we're fucking four lines into it. <laughs> we finally, we finally, we finally got to the to the to the to the chorus. Tom, we've got the first line down, and we got to the chorus. Yeah. So after raring and tearing, we now find that we're spinning, we're sliding, we're digging. Tom, we're stuck in muck. So what can you do in a tractor? What can you do to get you out of this fucking hole, pal? And of course, it is the line itself. It is oh, hit the diff and pray. I fucking love that so much. It's it's so there's so much Ireland in that song. There's just my lord. There's and pray like, that she goes all the way. So that's the, that's the entirety of the line. Is oh hit that's the, the entirety pray. of the line that she and, goes and, and, all and, the way. And, and, and come here, Tom. We'll do what we're doing up to this point. Is I'll tell you what my layman's definition of the diff is. I think you. I, I have a funny diff. feeling you're not as you're not as dosh as as you're making out. I actually know this. I actually know this and I'll tell you why I'll tell you why I know what the diff is when I was in college uh, 20 fucking years ago I was in college with a guy called Joe McArdle if you're listening to it now Joe how are you keeping and he uh, had a tractor and uh, he taught me what the diff was and anytime we were out fucking drinking and it looked like the road was insurmountable to get home and our legs were failing underneath us. Joe would <laughs> shout out, "Hit, hit the diff!" The diff. She'll dig or he would shout, "He would shout!" Out. He didn't. I don't think he said "hit the diff." He would say, "Oh, time for the diff!" Or "Diff yeah. diff Yeah, differ would be diff actually. Yeah. And 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 as my understanding about the diff, Tom, is the differential lock. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. when you press this button, where one wheel goes, all wheel goes. It's not a case of. Oh, well, the front two wheels will turn at this. I know the left wheel is, in, is moving a little bit faster than the right wheel. When you hit the differential lock, all four wheels turn at the same time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it, provided you're talking about all four wheels. Now, you can have... The, what a, well, explain what a differential is. Please do. All right. I, so, I, that's, that's, as near, that's as near to the sun as I can get you, Tom. Take us so, the rest of them. So you have, let's say, let's operate with just a two-wheel system for the time being, right? So it's the back, typically on a back-wheel drive car. If the power is being driven through the back wheels, i.e. BMWs, Merce- a lot of German cars, BMWs, okay. Mercedes, Toyota twin cams, you know, cars that tend, you know, they normally say, you know, steer from the rear, you'll hear this shit from lads who love a bit of drifting of and all the rest of it. I do believe Marty Moan has a fucking song called Steer From the Rear. He does, yeah. he does. And he, I think he's got one called Dip the Clutch as well. You know what I mean? It's It's... I don't know. He's, I, I don't he's know where found he gets a niche. Me. I don't know he's where he found gets a niche. Amazing. But um, a differential, typically what it is, is you have a straight bar, as you would in an old pram, if you can imagine, two wheels. Yes. Either, either end, you've got a straight bar, i.e. the axle. All well and good if you're going at slow speeds and you're going in a straight line. But if you need to take a tight bend, what will normally happen is both those wheels will want to turn at the same pace. And you'll end up getting... They'll, they'll just, they have to turn at the same pace because they're on the same axle. They have no choice. No, all they, can, of a sudden, they can do a bit. One will start getting digging in on the left-hand side if you're making a left-hand turn, and the outer one will start scraping because they, they just don't know how to make a turn because they're the real rear wheels. They don't have any turning arms on them. Okay. So what a differential is in the middle. If you imagine a couple of little clo- cogs passing over each other that allow the wheels to change speed as per the tra- traction under them. So you okay. make a left-hand turn, that inside wheel goes a lot slower. The outside wheel, okay. because it's got a bigger radius, can speed up. I feel you. Now, if you get bogged or you get one wheel caught on, say, a stone or some muck or whatever, and the outer wheel that has almost next to no traction, because you've got the differential on, on your axle and you've just no choice, it's there in almost all cars, all rear wheel drive cars, the wheel will just spin away because it has no traction. Now, what it'll do is it offer... 50% of the traction either way. Now, if you can lock the differential, i.e. a pin comes across and stops those two cogs, those two uh, fucking twin cogs alongside each other, it'll stop them from spinning in separate directions or at separate, separate speeds, and it'll force all the traction through that, that, um, the stuck one. So now what you've got is you're back to old school, one axle, 
fucking old school pram and she digs in at that stage because now you've got no choice. You want to go on a straight line, you're stuck up to your bollocks. You're not doing any fancy turns. You just want to go and go at the same fucking time with 50-50 going through the back wheels. She'll dig in. And that's why you hear some lads with old twin cams and stuff like that. What they'll do is they'll either replace it with a limited slip differential, which allows you to do exactly that, just like a tractor. Or, or the old 110 Defenders, Land Rovers used to have it as well. What the lads will do is they'll put they'll weld it up the fucking middle. You hear of lads, <laughs> real culty lads, putting a weld up. Fuck that lad, which means she'll be an absolute bastard for going around bends. But if you want to pull a, do- if you want to do a donut at a crossroads, and you want to you want to steer from the rear, then that's what you'll have done. A lot of culties will have absolutely welded the shit out of their differential. Terrible yoke for car parks because she'll just screech going around every fucking corner. But if you want to do a donut, she'll do it fucking beautifully. And if you, if your tractor, for example, is stuck in a in a in 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 a, in, in two foot of muck, and you need to just get the hell out of it, it stops your wheels. If you imagine your two wheels being two googly eyes going in all different directions, and you can't keep an eye on a fucking straight line, what it does is it slaps your t- you across the back of the head and forces your two eyes to go dead straight. Monta fuck lads, we're going dead straight. We'll need your googly eyes for all other times, i.e., turning, twisting, getting down roads, and all the rest of it. But we're dug in here in muck and shit, we need you both to operate together in the same direction. And, and you control that from your cab with, is it a, a switch, a button, a fucking... Older, older ones, it was, a, it was old. better being an older one because it, it was more tactile. It was an, actually a fucking lever. You'd go, plunk, plunk, and you'd feel that pin going across. Just like the old Land Rover Defenders used to have it. It was one, in between, you'd, you had high box, low box, regular gear stick, and you had... You fucking lock your diff, baby. And she she would <laughs> she jump like a fucking hare over a fucking dog at the great at the fucking Clan Mel racing. She would jump out of the fucking hole you need her in. And because it, it, that, that's what it was for. It would it would get you out of a literally get you out of a hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you know, I mean if you were trying to say pull a stump out of a fucking bad old corner of a field or right. something like that, and you just didn't have the traction because your wheels were trying to be all, hey man. We're independent, man. We just, <laughs> we just want to do our own thing and just help for the greater good. And the limited slip or the differential will just be locked and say, no, you two fucking idiots. Basically, it's like putting two, you know, country leaders in a room that have been arguing for years over their so different you're not, ideas. You're not getting out of here. I'm locking you in that fucking room until you can fucking find a way of getting this deal over the line. And, 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 and is it really the fucking last chance saloon that Marty sells it as? If you're stuck and the diff doesn't get you out of this hole, then nothing's getting you out of this hole, right? Like, you're not going to stay there and like be buried there. You're not going to have to have your fucking dinner brought to you every day. But like, No, you're going to get a bigger fucking yoke that can pull you out. That's what you fucking pull, yeah. do. Like. Simply, you just, yeah. Yeah. You're, you're going to get right, a bigger fucking like, you know, <laughs> Well, I guess I live here now. Well, uh, <laughs> you'd be amazed. Some lads have amazing... Like, they... I heard of a guy the other day in, a, in a, a guy we were talking. He's a young guy. He's a digger driver. And man, he loves, like, he would get this song tattooed on, down his back. <laughs> like, like a fucking Aryan brotherhood in the prisons, the way they get covered in tattoos of just writings from the Bible and stuff. That guy would get the entire song written down his chest. He fucking loves it. But he told me how uh, we, talk, we were talking about the Ford County, which were the first tractors to come out with the two sides. Big fucking wheels front and back. Yes. And he was just talking about how his grandfather had this technique if the thing ever got stuck or couldn't get out. Of, or he, he, it would always be brought to sort the situation out of pulling somebody else out. But even if it got fucking really bad, what he would, the tractor was so unbelievable that if you were able to get the wheels to turn at the same time with the diff locked, he was able to dig four holes under itself. Right. And then pull you out like a fucking winch. Actually winch you out of a thing. I mean, a phenomenal tractor. But um, that, is, that is the... the that's the meat, the diff. That is the meat and bones of the diff. So, so it, it, what Marty is, is putting forward here is a situation where he is, uh, he's got a job to do in a field. He, you know, going by the first uh, uh, verse that he sung us there, he could be doing any number of jobs <laughs> any throughout number the of fucking things. year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right here, he is stuck in a hole and he has two things that he needs to do. Hit the diff and say a quick prayer. <laughs> She goes, yeah, yeah. she goes all the way, yeah. And she goes all the way. I mean, that's there's, it. That's... there's there's insinuations. I mean, you don't really, you just need her to get there, ten feet away, out of you know. I mean, all the way, like I mean, it almost, you know, it's there's almost like you know, I went a 
there's almost something sexual connotations I'm picking up from that second line there. I'm absolutely wrong. I know I am. But pray that I mean, she goes all the way. It's like, you know what? I get you. I, but, but it rhymes. Look, I, I, it rhymes. And, 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 and I think it's also just, just good for, for, for life. Like there are certain situations in life, Tom, where uh, everything you've been taught and everything you've been trained just just fails you. Yeah. And like, all you can do is just have that moment where you're like, all right, Jesus, take the wheel. Here we go. We're fucking going. We're the speed running. It's called this. a leaving start, Jerry. It's called it's a leaving start. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it's called. And in this regards, it's just hit the diff and pray. That's it. If the fucking yeah. diff, diff don't fail me now. And literally, if, if it does fail you, you're walking the fuck back to wherever there's something bigger to take you I out. Fucking, I, I, I love it. Hit the diff and pray that she goes all the way. When I'm flat to the mat with the party hats, I'm heading for the tea. Now, I, 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 you know, tell, tell me, Tom, that Marty's not just making shit up here, right? I know mm. flat to the mat is accelerator to the board and we're going to go fucking... Your f- foot down to the mat, which is, you know, no tractor has a fucking mat, but it's a nice thing to say. You know, you're flat to the mat, i.e. your accelerator is literally on down. the fucking floor. It can't go any further. You're doing all you can in the situation. And uh, indeed, with- he's, heading, he's heading for the tea. And I got to tell you, Tom, there's, there's, nothing, there's nothing nicer than tea <laughs> on a farm with fucking wee triangle ham sandwiches. And, uh, I've had that. I, that's, I, there's, there's, yeah. I, my, my grandmother used to bring it in a glass bottle down to no, the field yes. we were working in. But of course, you know, I'd, you know, she would load it with as much sugar to kill a fucking cow. You know, she would just load, uh, like, load it. And it was fantastic. It was fucking fantastic. Uh, I, I, I glossed over a line there. You did, so you did, you did. He's heading for the tea, but he's flat to them out with the party hats, Tom. Yep. Uh, you're going to have to help me out there now. I want to hear what you think there. I, for the for the longest time, uh, I thought like there was a couple of things, Tom. For the longest time, I thought that he was actually wearing some sort of <laughs> party hat, and not like a fucking party hat, like a what a fucking child would have at a child's <laughs> birthday. Like, Just the little party hat, like I'm four. In my mind, it was a cowboy hat. I don't know why that is, but I I I, I, I just there was something. Very Bon Jovi about the whole thing. That yeah. he was wearing, you know, like you know the way you'd have like. For, for every group of farmers that you'd have, you'd have one guy that was a wee bit fucking wild yeah, and liable yeah, yeah, to show yeah. up with a fucking actual 10-gallon hat. Now, tell me I'm not lying. Tell me that's that, that, that there's not always just one fucking... Oh, like, no, you're one, 100% one, right. One a better phrase, one mad cunt. Well, there was, uh, there's always that lad who will never marry. You know what I mean? He goes to listen right, to... Right, him. Right. He goes to listen... There's no badness in him, but he goes to listen to Varna every year. Uh, he probably goes to the Rose of Tralee as well. He can guzzle pints, you know, and he lives and breathes fucking hydraulic fluid and fucking diesel, man. You know what I mean? He he lives and breathes it. And like that, he might have spent a month visiting a brother in Canberra or Perth. And he ended up with this dry as a bone hat. You know the style? They're the... Yes. Yeah, and, and he's had it that long. It's The living shit is bed out of him. And he still talks about the time, you know. How good it was in Australia. Oh, I got that, that I got that when I was in Australia. Yeah. And the only other thing that I had for this party hat, Tom, was that on the get I'm a fucking idiot here. I'm sorry, you're gonna have to walk me through, but on the chimney of the tractor, <laughs> the fucking Yeah, 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 yeah. The front exhaust. Yeah. That yeah. There, there's a little um hat on it that, that, that flaps up and down. When the exhaust is going, I guess that's a really good. That's a I guess really stop the fucking rain going into. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. And yeah, I've, yeah, I've, yeah. I've I've seen them where they're like sort of conical, party hat shaped, and I figured that if you were flat to the mat, that that would be up, always up. It wouldn't be down. It would be up. So when you see the party hat up, you know that guy's going fast. Like if you were to see a picture of that tractor and you were to ask, "Is this tractor moving or stationary?" You could look at the the cone on the exhaust on the front and if it was up you would know that he was fucking burying the boot yeah and that was I mean, what I thought the party hat was it's a decent yeah it's a decent one now I think he probably would have said you know with the party hat ripping fucking standing up or you know what I mean he's t- too much code in that I think we're just yes. leaving it with the party hat so I, what I feel and what I've heard party hats I've always thought fucking stupid but what I've heard party hats to be to be and I, I Flashing beacons, Jerry, is what. Flashing the beacons. 
which by law, all agricultural back, uh, vehicles and construction vehicles are to That's have. That's the party hat. Part, party hat. So you'd have two of them. You'd have them, one at the front left-hand corner, one at the back right-hand corner over your shoulder. Woo, woo, just swiping away. Like, you're not going to see the fucking, you know, the 20-ton, you know, 300-horsepower fucking tractor. <laughs> but, you know, bright fucking blue. <laughs> ripping against you like you know hauling fucking 20 or whatever tons behind it you know you're never going to see that but you'll you'll see those flashing beacons up the top for sure they'll definitely save you so right i again i stand to be corrected i would love to hear from the podcast listeners what they think they are but i have it in my head as i heard that song day one as the party hats were flashing beacons that they were flat they were flat out they were flat to the mat as well just fucking I, I, are you, are you sure it's not what I said, Tom? Which is several <laughs> leaps, several leaps in judgment to be even slightly right. I would love, I, <laughs> Marty's people. You have, I will tag you in it because I know his PR or his his social media people listen to the podcast. I they, this will get to the man at some stage. He does a lot of long journeys. At some oh, stage, yeah. this podcast will get to him. I, I, I think about the rate we're going. Right it's here just, It'll have to be a long fucking journey, judging at the rate this podcast is fucking. You know, it's it's around about here where he'll, he'll get real mad with us and throw throw his phone out the window because he's like, "No, party hats is all about the Battle of Gallipoli." Yeah, super constant. <laughs> It'd be a V eight outside your fucking window. Oh, <laughs> uh, I should have. We should have brought Paul Crowley in on this too. He <laughs> fucking loves trucks. Like he told me so. Like so many phrases that they taught. You know, never late in the V eight. You know, up three steps to heaven. All these, uh, there's so many of them. It's just, uh, all right. So that's what I, So we're heading for the tea. Okay, so Tom, they thought that we were quitting when the sun went down, but with a flame from the pipe, we drove all night till the fuel it ran out. I mean, there's something really nice about that. Isn't this there? man is not working a nine to five job. Ah, it's no, not, it's, no, no. it's not like when, the, you know, it's getting dark or we better quit. This guy is going to fucking plow on all night. Until the fuel ran out. Although, like I say, Tom, uh, we've said earlier that it's not really great to let all your diesel run out. It, no, no, you can't. You cannot let it all run out. And what, how people will, uh, will may, maybe people listen to this will go, well, where's the fuck a petrol station, Tom, in the middle of a field, Jerry? Where do we? There well, is just not there, right? There is, is none. They contract, typically the lead contractor, the guy who owns all the tractors or the lady. I don't know. Maybe there's some ladies who own contractors. There definitely is ladies involved in silage. And uh, oh, no, no. agricultural contracting uh, in the north of this country, for sure there is. Can you tell me a woman can't hit a diff? Oh, <laughs> all day long. <laughs> but, Tom, what's the what's the what's the what's the machine? It's not a machine, no. What's the what's the fuel? And, and I think it starts with a B. I can't think of the word. Bowser. Bowser. It's, Bowser. it's a fun. Bowser. It's the most fun word in construction or it's agriculture. Bowser. It's the most fun word. Bowser wasn't he? He's the bad guy in Mario. Wasn't he, was he the little guy off who hung around with... Or maybe it was the actual bad, bad guy. No, he's, he's the, he's the, the crocodile-looking guy, wasn't it? Crocodile-looking fucker in, in Mario as Bowser. They're known as Bowsers. The, They're the, the diesel tankers that normally get hauled behind a Toyota Land Cruiser, typically. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be disappointed if there was any other form of vehicle pulling one of these into the middle of a field at 10 o'clock at night to keep the, fucking, keep the system going. And I think the only other line that we need to pull apart here, Tom, was with a flame from the pipe. Now, in my mind, again, that's like a fr- flame from the chimney. I'm yeah. Keep calling yeah. the chimney. Please jump in and correct me. No, I will not. Exhaust. I will not. Exhaust. Keep calling it. Yeah. Keep calling it that. Um, and and will, will, it, will a flame emerge up there in the dark yeah, of the night? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if your engine is blowing fucking hot, man, if you've been going for 10 hours, we're basically just stopping for, you know, you don't stop even for, you know, just stopping yeah. for. Or tail okay. doors flapping. Yeah. Well, tail doors flapping. Literally, you're just. So, I mean, you give her a serious fucking slap at exhaust, you will see sparks coming out the top. Maybe the pipe will start to re- run cherry red after a while, like if you're really going hard. I mean, that, that's beautiful. That's, it's, it's beautiful to me that Marty's driving so long, so hard, so fast that fuck the lights, fuck, the, fuck everything else. I'm, I'm going by the fucking Rudolph the Red Nose Rain yeah. glow yeah. of yeah. the fucking chimney at the front. Yeah, ah, that's, yeah, yeah. Pitchforks at fucking. This is what, amazing you know stuff. But, you know what I'm going to tell you? John Lennon on his best day. <laughs> <laughs> There's, he is a folk hero that even fucking, you know, they said Liam Clancy was one of the best folk singer, folk writers of all time. Even Bob Dylan said he, he probably thought he was one of the greatest folk writers. I don't know. Yeah. Bob Dylan, have you fucking heard of Marty Moon? Have you? Have you? Have flame from the pipe. That's, I mean, that, 
it invokes so many fucking so many emotions in me right now just the really, thought of that it's, it's take up your take up your gun it's take up your pitchfork you know we've got a fucking flame from the pipe we're going pal we're going to battle here there's, there's, there's sort of real battle connotations anyway it, really like for the want the of a better word it's rousing it, it, it's, it's, it is rousing it is rousing stuff that is and i like i'm i'm only a wee fucking soft hands tom and i want to i want to go fucking more bit of silage huh I, give, me, give me a yoke with plenty of poke. There you go. Yeah, now now we're into the we're into the now second we're into, verse. Okay. We're into the sound. That was a nice a nice inter- <laughs> <laughs> so I need to point out too, people will be listening to this going, I don't get it. We're, you don't get it because this is a drug. Anything that has hydraulics, anything that dr- is driven on diesel, oh, it is a drug to these lads. That same chap that I was talking to, he works a 10 hour day driving a digger. He started driving diggers before he could barely stand. He was used to, he was three years of age when they started him driving a digger. He, he'll stop after his 10 hour day. Then he'll go transport diggers for that same company on the back of a truck. And if he's not doing that, he's in a fucking tractor hauling grass or hauling something till the fucking flame came out of the pipe. This kid doesn't. And, 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 he, and if, if he's not doing that, Tom, he's looking up diggers online. Oh, you know it. You know it. And t- like, and it's not. It's not like people will go, "Oh, lo- loser." Like, no, you don't get it. You don't no, get this it. Is a, this, this is a is way a... of life, like. And uh, we we will give him a yoke with plenty of poke, Tom. I mean, like we know what that is. He wants. Yeah. He wants. He, he wants something with a bit of grunt. Yeah, so like, over two hundred horsepower. You want something over two hundred horsepower? Like you're getting into proper range there when you're getting. 200 horsepower, big old tractor. You get, you'll get things out in Australia and stuff who, that do a few thousand acres and they will be pulling through dry old land and they're fucking plows and stuff behind them. They're like something out of fucking Dr- Judge Dredd. You know, well, this, this is it. This is what he gets into here in the, in the second verse. This is the equation. This is, this, this is like Marty Moan's fucking wish list here. A yoke with plenty of poke, a can of Easy Star, 1,500 acres and 40 ton of grass. That's it. He's a happy man after that. Now back up the truck there because you see what, what he's implying with a can of easy start. I, l- 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 let, me, let me tell you what I think this is, Tom, okay? Yeah. And you can tell me whether I'm right or wrong, okay? Yeah. It's been, work- it's been working. That's been, set- that's been setting us up. This wasn't the plan. Night, this wasn't the plan. We were going to discuss it and have a crack and, have, and talk about it. But it, this has turned into uh, questions and answers. Questions by Jerry, answers by Tom. E- e- easy start is a stuff that I have have known to like start fucking lawnmowers and shit like a like a little sort of a like a like a little like a little wd-40 spray oil kind of absolutely yeah that that, that that i guess is like more combustible or some shit but it's lethal but, it's fucking lethal you bl- you spray it into your typically into the air box or the air intake and uh, and that's the thing if your car can't combust the diesel because diesel is hard to crank sometimes if, say, you don't have spark plugs like you do in a petrol car. Right. You know what I mean? It, it comes under compression, then the heat plugs kind of warm it up, and it's, it sparks as a result of compression. Now, if you're, if you're lost compression in your engine, it's an old, old compression, compression, you squirt some fucking easy, spra- easy start into it. It's like spraying a little bit of petrol into it. And it goes, and that gets you going. Oh, and that gets you going. Once, to, once you get one crank of those pistons going... You're off to the fucking race. Just don't stop her again. It's typically when they're cold. That's what, Mar- that's what Marty needs here now. He needs a yoke with plenty of poke and a can of Because once you start it, he's going to fucking go and on. And this is why I'm raging. I, I don't know where I left the file of all the different vehicles. I gave you examples of the type of vehicles he's on about. Big old, they, big old monsters of things, but they're old. They need easy stuff. Right, this is my thing. Like I, a TW35 Ford or a, a Ford County. Ford made some great... They, the TW range started at TW20, TW30... CW35, that's when you're getting into big old tractors. Big, so this big. Is, this is the thing, man. In my mind, Marty was driving like these fucking sleek yokes nah. with fucking iPads in the walls. But what he's telling us... There's no here, nostalgia in that. There's no love in a Lamborghini-looking tractor. Although Lamborghini do make tractors, but yes. um, that's for another fucking podcast altogether. <laughs> Unless you want me to tell you the story as to how Lamborghini came about. Oh, we, might, we might save it for the end if we've time, Tom. Correct. If we've time. Who knows yeah. what time we have. <laughs> what Marty, what Marty's, what Marty's telling us here now is that he doesn't give a fuck what you give him. He doesn't oh, no. want comfort. He doesn't want, uh, you know, uh, a blowpunk sound system. 
He wants any old piece of shark. If you it's a piece of shit tractor, if you give him a kind of easy start that he can get it going, he's happy. It needs plenty of poke. Like it needs to be able to haul haul ass like in that. Well, it gone. needs to be able to haul at least forty tons of ass. Going by going by the man's own sums here. His own yeah, his own admission. Now, this is where my issue comes also with the numbers here. Now, 1,500 acres, no worries. That's a big old farm that's possibly a couple of farms put together. Like you go to Roscommon, that's pretty much Roscommon or Loud. Um, but some big farms and 1,500 acres. I mean, these two lines hauling 40 ton of grass, I mean, those are just numbers he's throwing out there. But also, there's nobody hauling 40 ton of grass unless it's in round bales and you have a truck haul because a truck's license is 40 ton weight limit. Your, your average silage slash, slash silage trailer is anywhere from 14 to 16, sometimes 18 to 20, but that's max. You're talking, you're not even going on public roads with a 20, you know? Right. Yeah. I, I won't lie. On more than one occasion, I have looked up the Chagas uh, <laughs> recommendations for trailer loading. Uh, I, I, I have. It's a difficult website to follow in some ways. Only, uh, even I'm kind of going, oh, I don't fully, but 20 ton, cut off, Max. Mm. Cut off. Because like. honestly, I, I, t- I, I took Marty at his word here. He, hey, he, he, could, full... he may have a truck trailer. He may be hauling, he may be taking it from one farm in round bale form, taking it on a big old low loader, they're known as, when it's just a flat body trailer, I low load, taking it. He might be taking it to the UK. It might be high end silage, taking it to fucking pedigree cattle in fucking Herefordshire where they've had a bad year for silage which where Ireland made a lot of money last year on selling silage to the UK because they got flooded so bad or was the year before they got flooded so badly Ireland made a fortune at selling silage to the UK money for Earl Hay Tom there you go there you go so Uh, that's just to clarify that I don't believe it's it's a tractor and trailer that's pulling that 40 ton of grass you see this, 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 this means that it might actually be, uh, you know, a metaphor for World War Two. <laughs> are we talking Normandy or what do you? We're hauling forty ton of something. I don't know. Anyway, we'll take we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll give Marty a license here and then. And that if he said that if he said that hauling forty ton of grass was the only thing that would sound right in there. We'll, it does, we'll it does sound right. I, I, who I'll am be I? honest with you. I'll be honest with you, Tom. Hauling fourteen ton of grass also seems right and more likely. But you know what? It doesn't sound as good, does it? Any, anybody can be a critic, right, Tom? Uh, when did you ever rate? You know, when did I number fucking, one. When, when I fucking haul any grass, Tom. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I love this next line. Take us through this next. This next. So, uh, and it, next, it uh, needs to be. If people here, haven't Tom. seen it printed. This is how it rolls. So, I said goodbye before July to the woman in an awful rush. That's exactly how it's put together. There is no spacing. There's no punctuation. There's nothing there. So, yes, we do need to break it down. That harvesting of anything in the way of grass. He'll, uh, some guys like this year. The field next was he got his first cut in. I think he got it in early May. Did, did it right. mean so, yeah, that means unbelievable growth. So you were, you are not going to be seeing your woman. So he said goodbye to her in an awful rush. That's what he said. Like, got the call. He was probably doing some yeah, probably doing shitty fucking job waiting, only waiting for that road, that call, that call, like the rodeo cowboy, just waiting for that fucking call. Give yeah. me the call. And you're like, I have a fucking TW35 with your name written all over, but a can of, two cans of the easiest. I fucking... <laughs> Slab of easy start under the seat for him. <laughs> and he's like, Good luck, Catherine. I'll see you fucking. Yeah. I'll see you later. <laughs> Mar- Marty, what are we doing this this evening? <laughs> well, I don't know what you're doing, love. <laughs> but next time we see you, we'll be doing Christmas, essentially, yeah. is what I'm saying. Yeah. What would you like for Christmas? I mean, like, that's it. Like, as you said before, Tom, with these lads, it's a vocation. Like, it's. Yeah. it's, it's it's the drug, so it's like you know, he's a young man, he's got a young lady by his side, and that's all nice, Tom. Not, not to like about it, but when he gets the shout to go do the grass, he's right. Like, Listen, come here, see you around the Christmas. Good luck. She knew what she was hitching her wagon to day one, Jerry. That's what I'm saying. She knew she was she was hitching her wagon to a grass man, you know. I got I, but even at that time, not even fucking texting her until Christmas is cold blooded. <laughs> 
But what are you going to do? Lead her down the garden path. You know what I mean? We you got to commit. Spoken. You got to commit. It was near Christmas. I'm sorry, Tom, but I got I to gotta ask you a question. What the fuck is he doing near Christmas? Because I thought this was all uh, a, a summer endeavor. It seems uh, to me that he, he pulls up round about early October. Yeah, but you're talking, no, but you're getting, you're getting harvesting. You're talking about harvest season now. It's going to be autumn. We're about to start. We're the 1st of September. We're talking harvesting. I always get excited, even though it is my birthday month. Not for that. For some reason, something ingrained in me gets excited about the harvest month because it's just a fucking time of all the work that was put in. Grass is grass. It does its own fucking thing. Yes, you do have to, you have to fertilize it throughout the year with different things, i.e., slurry and then you know if the nitrates aren't right and that you've got to balance that ph level with maybe 10 10 20 which is a fat man-made fertilizer just to let you know though also the same one that goes into a certain type of making if you know what i mean <laughs> um but the less said about that the better the harvesting is the wheat the corn the barley mostly barley we grow a lot of that in ireland um fucking a lot of good potatoes will be coming out soon you know that kind of way it's going to be an exciting couple of months right up until october now you might get fucking winter you might get winter sowing out of it too they've started to like we have the biodiversity of farming going on around the world the amount of irish farmers and farm educated people who are in the likes of kenya and zimbabwe the breadbaskets of africa testing and teaching them about irrigation uncle of mine in this in the early 80s spent six years on and off teaching Saudi farmers how to irrigate. I'm, yeah. I, I've heard this was a thing. Yeah. Every fortune, now and then you'll fall across to be made of it. Someone fortune that says, oh, like my it. uncle or my, my, my dad or like my granddad or whoever it was was in Saudi Arabia. I yeah. have heard that. Yeah. I've heard that. So you're... But you're, would, it take you up to, would it take you up to Christmas though, Tom? Well... We're going, uh, also, I believe this is a setup. I think this is a setup. I think this is a setup for uh, another another part of the song that's going to oh. call back later on down the line. So his next line, uh, I found a seat for no break. Now, this, 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 he's got a lot going on here now. And I appreciate that maybe his brakes are failing him and he can't keep the engine lot going on. But when he says he found a seat, does he mean to say he actually found a seat that he could sit in or did he... In in my layman's terms here, did he did he did he find seating in together in a way that he found pleasing, or am I just making shit up? I think you're making shit wildly up there. I took it as if, um, it, but surely he didn't find a seat to sit no, on. No, 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 no. Let I'm trying to find an example that you definitely would know about. So, Top Gun, right? Right. Top Gun, same exact same phrase. I got a seat. They use the exact same fla- phrase when they basically, I got a seat on a fucking plane. I'm back. I got my wings. I All right. So seat. basically, he got a he, 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 he got, got a, job. a job. He got a job. So a contractor. He found a contractor that was in need of a man. Okay. Okay. So he found a seat. Mm-hmm. But he had now. Is that actual brakes in the tractor, or is that just like he had no uh, he had no stop? Oh, no, no, I believe it brakes were gone in the fucking tractor. <laughs> genuinely, genuinely, the amount of vehicles that I've sat into and you're going, the brakes, no, oh, what's the fucking point? You're going to be just using, you're going to be using your gears basically to slow you down. You know what I mean? So, so even though, even though this tractor that he had in his next lane, he said, with loads of power, despite the, the fact that he had loads of power, Tom, he was behind an hour. I mean, like, you know, is it that regulated time-wise that, you know, you have X amount of grass out of this field in such a time, or I feel and don't come out of it until all the grass is gone? I think there might be a crossover there of two different trades. I think behind an hour might be racing to the boat with a truck. Gotcha. I think that's where, because there, there isn't. I mean, farmers, you know, and far, farming contractors are normally farmers too. You know, they, who has a watch? What do you need to watch for? You know what I mean? Keep going till she fucking rains. You know what I mean? Now, this is an interesting one. So, I found a seat. I had no brakes. Couldn't keep it cool. Quite literally, those are two major fucking problems that you will have in every old vehicle. You just, you're not sucking in enough air that you haven't given it enough time to cool down. The brakes, there you go. I had no fucking brakes. So, he got a seat. In other words, he got a tractor, got a job. But the fucking thing, I had no fucking brakes. That's where we need a punctuation right there. 
because now we're on to I couldn't keep it power. I couldn't keep it cool. Fucking thing was okay, overheating. So, Flame from so the pipe, Jerry. Flame from the pipe. Already, we were we were We've forewarned. Already, we were already, forewarned about this. This thing issue. is fucking running hot. For, he's running ten hours in a goal. Exactly. Exactly. And it, exactly. It, it, the fact that he couldn't keep it cool, Tom, suggests that there are ways to keep it cool. There is. I mean, you normally get out on the open road, suck some air through the rad. But you know what? I mean, I'm, if you've got a thermostat, I've, I've been here, Tom. I've, I've I've been here with a with a fucking radiator that was malfunctioning on a trailer yeah. in Ventus and I was told that the only way to keep the oak cool if you see it rising up is to either stop the car or drive the car, one or the other. With loads of yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. Now I, I only replaced the thermostat in my own vehicle the other day. She was giving a bit of jip, and I could hear the little spring inside twanging. It was a shot in the dark. Turns out it works. Thank Christ. Look at that. It, it, it you know, thank Christ it worked. So again, it isn't. There's there's methods to keeping it cool. Probably topping it up with coolant if the water pump is pissing out fucking coolant everywhere. He's probably not, it, He's in the middle of a field with no access to water. You know, is, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it is it possible, Tom, that he can't keep himself cool? That he's losing the head a wee bit with this piece of shit tractor. Yeah, I, I, you know what? It's such an it's such a common occurrence in older tractors. I would I would say it's probably as ba- as literal as it sounds. Couldn't keep it cool. <laughs> Literally, the fucking thing is overheating on me, and I'm. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, Marty really is the master of the single entendre when it comes to tractors. Yeah, yeah. he says he can't keep it cool. The fucking thing's going hot, but he has all the power that he wants. But he's running behind an error. So what does he do, Tom? He gives the pump a screw. Yeah. What pump? What no. pump, Tom? This what is, is this? Thing? This is right what up the there. What the fuck with, is this man talking about? This is up there with sucking diesel, Jerry. It's as old as the hills. You know what I mean? It's like that great phrase, never sweat the small stuff. It who knows what it fucking means. But <laughs> it means get her get her fucking gone. You know? The pump, a screw. It was it, it, it was explained to me when I pulled somebody up on this phrase, give that pump a screw. And quite literally, it was it was to do, it is to do with like it's it's it was a way of kind of opening up. It's opening up a valve on a on a on a a, a pipe yes. that is that something is flowing through. Most likely a water pump. Give that fucking give that pump a screw. I.e., open up that valve another bit. Lift up the sluice gate. Fucking let all that diesel through because we need to fucking. We need, we need to go. To we're behind. We're behind the time behind here. I, do, you want, do you want to hear my fucking uh, nonsense reading on give the pump a screw? Yeah. And, and it, you know, some of this is just picked out in the sky, Tom, and some of it has some basis in reality. I, I, I remember one place I used to work had a forklift, and it had like the crudest limiter on the speed that you ever seen in your life. Underneath the uh, accelerator pedal, it was like the head of a bolt coming up through the. <laughs> That's some Father Ted shit, isn't it? And, and like it wasn't something that somebody had done. It had been part of the forklift that they just put like a, a, a an, an M8 bolt into a thing, and depending on how far down you put it, was how far you could press the pedal up. Do you know what that reminds me of? That every single washing machine on the planet has a fucking standard fifteen newton concrete block in it. Right. Yes. It's the exact same yeah, thing. It's like to, to stop it from jumping off the fucking. Rails. Yeah. But just like that, the company who made, whoever made it, was a Lieber or somebody probably made the, the forklift at some stage. They went, well, like, we get, we, could we not just make a shorter fucking pedal? Not dull. They're the no, same not, ev- not everybody wants it. What you want to do is sell it as is. And if you want your employees not to be rallying around the backyard, which we did all the time. Tom, yeah, of course. Uh, you, you, you put this very crude limitation device on it. So in my mind, there's one of these on Marty's tractor. And he's like, get that fucking thing out, screw that thing out, and fuck it away. Do you I know what? Very... I, I prefer your version. I prefer your version. Fuck it. But if, if this is an if alternate we, reality, I want this if, to happen. Uh, if we've learned anything from from Marty and tractors in general, is that no, no, no farmer, no contractor would put such a such a thing on a tractor. Nobody wants these things to fucking go slow, Tom. Oh nobody's no, trying, oh, no. Nobody's trying to slow this process. You then. have to understand. <laughs> you have to grow up very fucking quickly. If you're put in a tractor, you know what I mean? You, you, there's nobody going, Hey, you know what? Take your time. Just, just work through it. And, and you know, call me anytime you're not, um, you know, call me anytime that you're not sure about a situation. It's getting that fucking thing. And don't come out of it until I'm, I meet you tonight with a new packet of fags for you and a, fucking, <laughs> and a bottle of Lucas aid and a fucking fill of diesel. That's I'm, it. And go as fucking hard as you can. That's, you've got to grow up a real fucking, because we're in a country that rains a shit 
ton. And if the rain's to the point that you can't get in at fields, the farmer can't get his silage, the fucking contractor can't get his fucking payment, he might have a million euro fucking overhead with fucking right. loans out with, to the bank. With, with yokes there's like nobody, that, there's no, there's, there is no feeling sorry for you. It is do it and do it fucking fast and hard and don't fucking break anything if you can. But, but if you break something, on... fucking break it right off so I can claim it on the insurance. I, I, but aren't they lucky, Tom, that the kind of people that sign up for this kind of thing are the kind of people that are just like, hey, yeah, fine. That's yeah. my kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There is no interview process in this. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's done. Is he good? Grant. Fine. That's it. That's, that's how the jo- that's how he that's how you get a seat, Jerry. That's how you oh, get a seat to the party. That's how you is, get a this, seat. This is fucking. This is like the 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 the, the Spartans putting the the gas and out eight years of age into the forests with the wolves. Yeah, that come out Literally. of it. Literally, like, before I before I started to drive a car at age seven, which I think we talked about <laughs> on our. Or, or if anybody's never heard of the two of us and you just stumbled on this, uh, search fucking Tom and Jerry podcast. It's up somewhere on something. Well, we definitely talked about how I started driving a Datsun Cherry at age seven. <laughs> I wanted to drive it to my communion. But, but not only a month or two before that, the first tractor I drove was uh, a, a Massey 35 with no cab. Fantastic traction. Fantastic yeah. traction. Didn't need to lock the diff in this thing ever. It would come in and out of any fucking hole. And it was started with a nail. And I was left, that job was left to me. Stay in that fucking field. Don't hit anything. And just, I, I was basically going in after the hay had been turned yes. or had been cut. I was to go in and tur- turn it over. Turn. So dried on the other side as well. So I just stayed and I went, okay. My voice hadn't broken. I'm just sitting on a tractor for five hours. And that's... Beautiful. The discipline that teaches you to not kill, not kill yourself, but more so don't kill yourself out of fear of getting in trouble from killing yourself because you right. would get the arse slapped off you dead. Do you know, you, that was, it wasn't fear of dying. It was fear of disappointing people. <laughs> I mean, like Marty here, it has to be says, shares your optimism, Tom, because as by his own words here, he's out all night. And this, this yoke really does seem like, yeah, now that I know what you're talking about, that mm-hmm. you've got a seat, and it, okay, so we got a job, but this is an old piece of shit back up. He's out all night with no lights. So this is, this thing doesn't even have fucking lights. He's just that's, driving around. That's, down a, like that's a, a common bollocks. occurrence. That's a very <laughs> common occurrence. Again, just like the brakes, these things are what are known in the vehicular industry as consumables. Light bulbs, brake pads, uh, fucking tires. These things are consumables. And you will only get them if they're absolutely fucking necessary. But you won't be going, <clears throat> hey, I pulled over here. Yeah, can you drop down some bulbs the next yeah, the time lo- you're on the way? The lumens you, on these are a wee bit low. Because <laughs> man, woman, or child on the other end of that phone, you will get chewed out of it so fucking much. It, you'll just be hung up on, for one. And then the next time they'll come down and go, that was a funny one about the bulbs. You gas bastard. You weren't and, fucking and serious, were you? I'll, I'll fucking tell you what's getting better again, Tom. You will be nicknamed bulbs for the rest of your fucking life. Till you fucking die. And you'll have why to invent you, a story. Why you, why you, yeah, why, why did they call him Bulbs? Uh, I was driving around in the dark one night to ask for Bulbs. Fuck, get him. Get him. Get Looking him, for fucking, the fuck of bulbs. fucking... Fucking Edison over there, what? Huh? Jesus you know, Christ. Well, Marty doesn't want Bulbs. He's grand. He's, he's got no lights. He's only, seeing st- he's only seeing stars and the gloom from the moon and the diesel light in the dash. Now, once again, Tom, he's letting it fucking run a wee bit low on diesel for anyone's life. Exactly. Yeah, but I got to tell you one thing, Tom. The line and the gloom from the moon, as delivered in Marty Moan, yeah. or, uh, cadence, there has never been a more monotone line in a song. I often thought moon. about it because I'm like, the gloom from the moon? I'm like, the I hear it. Gloom from I'm, the moon. Maybe, is, is, it, is it correct? Is that the line correct? The gloom I mean, from the like, moon? The gloom from the moon. Uh, uh, like, uh, I mean, like a, a moon would generally be bright, I guess, I suppose, unless there's a cloud passing over it. In which Jeez, case, I mean, this is, I, I, I read it to be one really depressing moon, like the gloom from the moon. It's like, Marty, you had me up. You had me up, you know, and then all of a sudden you're talking about like gloomy moons. Jesus, man. This is oh, some I guess fuck, the, This is Waylon you know, Jennings shit. This is like... I, I thought that I thought it was all a love song to to, to tractors and the such like, but this 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 verse here 
from when he had the job in a tractor that had no brakes, that was impossible to keep cool, that he was running behind time, and he was out all night, like with fucking no diesel on a fucking pissy, miserable, gloomy afternoon. This is this is the this is the this is the the fact that uh, this tractor shit, Tom. It ain't all gravy. It doesn't appear to be. This seems nope. to be the the downer paragraph, the downer verse. So. Uh, but, it is, luckily yeah. Enough, he, he, luckily enough, he, he he picks it up again. Now we launch straight back into the fucking chorus it, again, which I don't think any of us needs. I, I, I think I think what this, this that particular verse, like you said, there's a lot of negatives in that. But what it does, it's the making of you. This is the verse where you put on your big boy trousers, and this is the right. di- this is what separates the kind of person who could do this job from the person who couldn't. Most people would look at that and go, "It's got no brakes. The thing is overheating. It's I'm got out all fucking night." I'm, I'm breaking my bollocks and I'm, I'm, I'm still behind an hour? Are you fuck? I'm out in the night. I've, they haven't given me any lights and the fucking, there's a gloom off the moon and now I'm running out of... De- are you... No, fuck this. And no, no support system, no HR, no fucking nothing. Are you joking me? I mean, if you're behind an hour, you clearly okay. haven't had any lunch, no sick pay. Are you fucking joking me? You better be dead or dying. Simple as that. Uh, I mean, we can even throw it in here if we want to mix it up a wee bit that he couldn't keep it cool that that might be Marky losing his cool and he's only seeing stars like he's actually getting fucking dizzy from hunger and... Let's double entendre. Let's make it both. Fuck it. Let's make he's it both. It all in there. So this, this tractor shit ain't all gravy. I mean, like, you kind of had me up the way a wee bit there, but now I'm not seeing the missus until Christmas, and, you know... Mmm. That's, uh, you know... But you know what? Like, it's the same, same... It's the same rules for Navy SEALs, basically, Jerry. It's, that's, that's what it is. Same rules for I, Navy SEALs. This yeah, song is very revealing in fairness. I'm amazed he was allowed to actually fucking publish this. It's uh... <laughs> <laughs> behind the curtain. <laughs> so we're into the chorus we're again. So we're, we're into the chorus more lifting, and sewing, bailing, drawing, hauling, and book raking. Back and stacking, plowing, crashing, tipping, wrapping, table doors flapping. flapping. Give the wink. Sucking diesel, cutting truck, and spreading pipe and double, clutching, spinning, sliding, digging, rigging, rearing, tearing, losing. Wait, we believe. Wait. Uh, oh, hit the different phrase. She goes all the way. When I flat to the map with the party hats, as I'm heading for I'm the heading tea. for the tea. Well, I thought that we were quitting oh, oh, when the sun went, went down. down. With a flame from the pipe, go on out of that. Yeah. We drove all night till the fuel, if ran out. Now, So now, Tom. Now. Now we're in. So this, this is, this is this possibly is, the, the explanation for the 40 ton. Well, this, 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 I got to tell you, this, this next one is where he saved, uh, this one, this last verse, Tom, is fucking impenetrable. I'm going to break your heart on more. This is the fucking Finnegan's wake of track or something. <laughs> this is the, not, one, this is, not two words in this thing makes fucking sense. What's your man's one? The fucking, uh, it's, a, it's not, is it Homer's Odyssey? No. What is the one? Uh, uh, the yeah. Bloomsday. What's Blooms? Is yeah, Bloomsday. Bloomsday. Ulysses. Yeah. 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 Apparently yeah. you have Ulysses, which is hard. And Ulysses. Finnegan's yeah. Which is like Joyce taking the piss all together and that's what I fucking think Marty's doing here because not none of this makes sense okay no. all right overload Tom on a downhill road slapping through the gears so overload uh, it'll help me immensely if I know what the fucking overload is because I don't know what that is and oh, I can't you're absolutely it. reading too much into it say it out loud overload he's overload he's got yeah. too much exactly which what I think was the setup for when he was losing weight. Ah, and he had four. Like this is the callback. Okay. This is the callback, I believe. On a downhill road, and he already possibly doesn't have much in the way of fucking brakes. So you're overloaded, which already means your stopping distance has fucking so catastrophically fucking shortened. So now you're so a runaway train right now. Right now, gravity is thrown you, and you're slapping through the gears. That's probably coming down through the gears, which is the double clutching that we talked about. And, and that's to, 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 to maintain a wee bit of order in what is becoming a, 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 an uncontrolled descent. Now, this is it. Perfect. Okay, yeah. Perfect. Absolutely. Well, you know, you, know you stuck you know the landing there, 10 points, fucking Olympic gold to Jerry McBride for that one. Well, I, I got to tell you, Tom, if I was over my weight limit on a downhill road, doing all I could to keep this yoke on the road, do you know what I wouldn't be doing? Fucking sending Snapchats of what I'm at to everyone on the beer. Get your phone out of your hand there. I, you see, I think we've gone back to the field now. 
I think part, let's park the gears the downhill bit. Let's go back to the field with no lights. And oh. we're in the field with no lights. We're driving around fucking Yoka's roast and diesel light on the dash. I can guarantee you if you had a, I don't know what ways, I don't operate on Snapchat, but if it was like TikTok or uh, hashtags on fucking Instagram, I guarantee you. Or if you even looked up hashtag diesel light, I guarantee you the amount of Irish latter teen to mid 20 year olds that have put that picture up on a Saturday night while they know all their friends are out on the beer. The lads, the, the lads who work on, you know, mushroom farms, fucking I'm gonna, nine to I'm fives. Gonna, I'm going to real quick, just, I'm going to real quick, just look up hashtag diesel light on Instagram. It's the only, <laughs> it's the only thing it. in that, that I it. have, um, I have uh, to hand here now uh, uh, hashtag diesel light fewer than a hundred posts but uh, you like you know, that it's, it's all young lads but like it's all young lads having a good time yeah it's disappointing it's not you know cut this from the podcast Tom There's you know what you know what you went like into Instagram time. we are already circumventing what what fucking Marty's already told us it was Snapchat all along you know what? Okay. Why did we jump straight? Listen, into fucking listen Instagram. to Marty. Listen Christ to Marty. Above. Christ above. Christ yeah. above. But again, uh, this is the, this is the vocation of it. Everybody else is on the beer. All these pals is on his beer. His missus is on the beer, and he's sending Snapchats at fucking two in the morning that he's like spinning around a, a, a field, the you know with fuck all diesel. Yeah. Now, yeah. Tom, we go on here. Okay, now we. I this this has been mentioned earlier, and like I said, Paul Crowley could be brought in here for this one. So let me let me let me run it through you here. Okay, I'm gonna uh-huh. I'm, I'm gonna go here. Hit the jewel to low, and I started to roll. All wheels in the air. It was my chance to grease the nipples. I never knew was there. Now I've got this is poetry. Fucking, uh, my good Squares. God, stony grey soil of Monaghan. This is. <sighs> Fucking incredible right now that we have not only we we've transcended into a fucking world here that cannot possibly be fucking just wrapped up in one podcast. We could have started a whole podcast series on this song, by the way, but this bit right here is like, oh my god! Like, <laughs> do, do, you, do you want me to take a stab at it, Tom? If you would please, yeah. It's it's real simple. I don't know what the jewel to low is. I don't know what that is. But that was mentioned the, already in the podcast. There's people who have listened with a cuter eye, a cuter ear than you have. Are you very cute ears? I have to say, um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but the, the it was mentioned in, earlier in, in the episode. So All right, okay, well, okay. If I missed it, I missed it. Okay, I'm assuming it's some sort of fucking night rider turbo boost. Just going by what he's mentioning here, that it's some sort of blast of power to get a job done quicker. Uh, so he hits the jewel to the low. Now he starts to roll. Okay, now we're, now we're cooking. Now we're going places. And in my mind, he's going so fast that the tractor is... Uh, if you're driving fast on the road, you would say, I was only touching the road in places. You were going mm-hmm. so fast. You're like a fucking car in the Beano that you're literally floating off the fucking road. But I'm reading into this that Marty is going so fast that the tractor is hopping off the ground so much that he literally has time to get out of the tractor. That's how fucking fast it's going. And go underneath the tractor. It, in, it is literally in the air for so long that he can go underneath it and grease some bearings and joints underneath it. And not only just the ones that he fucking knows to get to. He's under there for so long that he's finding new nipples to grease. And fuck it, I can get all them done. And yeah. still get back in the cab of the tractor before it hits the ground. Now, tell me that isn't some inception level <laughs> fucking incredible fucking writing right is there. That what it is? Is that, that what is, it is that's it. That is it. That is it. That is it. Okay, and I'm sorry I skipped by the jewel to low, because what is the jewel to low? Is oh like yeah, some, we go back to, yeah, that's, that's, like that's, a turbo that's a, or something. No, that's that is a, a jewel gearbox, one with a low box. So, oh, I, yes, so I, yes, you know what? I think those in the low box. You did. I, I think those two lines. Uh, uh, and I, I hit the jewel to low, and I started to roll. Park it there. Stop. Punctuate. New fucking scenario. 
all wheels in the air, the new vehicle. Let's say the jewel to low is the truck. He's got fucking a ton up. He's struggling. He's in a wet old fucking yard somewhere. It's all fucking muck and shit. Hit the jewel into low. I started to roll. Fucking sigh of relief. Once I get her rolling. Yeah, we'll go on Take off the fucking rain jacket. Throw it in the back. Fucking on we go. Roll a fag and off you go. That Park that. Because now we're into all wheels in the air. Because that's, that's a new, this is another journey. Imagine these are scenes. You're just cutting over and back to scenes. So now we've cut to Marty driving a fucking tractor. Clipping so fast. All wheels in the air. Now, to explain this uh, to anybody going, grease and fucking nipples. You joke me. How kinky is this shit? A lot of vehicles, um, agricultural vehicles and construction vehicles, unlike your own car, for the most part, all you will need to do is top up oil from into the oil reservoir. Now, sometimes you may have to top up hydraulic oil for the uh, brake system or the power steering system. But the, if you're doing that, you've got a bigger problem than just fucking leaking. You've got to get that sorted. Right. So for the most part, any engine oil that's needed, pour it in the reservoir, sorts it out itself. Some of these Tom, vehicles... Could I, just, could, could I just say I'm having such a fucking great time? <laughs> I would have a way more fun than I thought I would. Way more fun. I thought and I thought I was going to have a lot of fun. <laughs> I, and this is it. But I genuinely thought we'd be done with this in 20 minutes and go, how the fuck are we going to string this over fucking at least 45 minutes an hour? <laughs> Jerry McBride, we are over two hours into this. I, like, Jesus, Mary and Joseph's. So... <sighs> A lot of these, a lot of these components, i.e., you'll see the hydraulic rams that can lift up fucking the arms at the front, the arms at the right. back. They don't have a new reservoir that you can go to. In a lot of cases, you, they just have these little things, quite literally hidden. But a good, yeah, person who's in charge of that vehicle should know where every one of these little ducts, where you put a grease gun onto and you pump in grease. Now you'll always have, it's just, it looks just the very same pretty much as the one you'll see for your silicone or caulking around your tires right. and whatnot. It looks very and, similar and, to one that. And the nipple would look, I've, I've seen nipples, it's like a, it, it looks like a nipple tom with a little ball bearing in it. Exactly. Uh, but if, you, if you're struggling with what that would look like, then it would look like a smaller version of how you would pump up a bike. What, what it looks like a little... is a giant version of a bo- ballpoint pen. Is what it right, is. Yes, 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 in yes, that yes. the little bit, the little ball in a pen is the same way as a bearing. It only allows out a little bit. It won't allow really out any grease, but it has it's spring loaded so that when you put your sealed fucking uh, grease gun up yeah. to it, grease will drive into it. Yeah, because grease they, in they will inv- invariably overuse heat and just leakage of seals, because seals are yet again another consumable thing that only when they fucking go. Not when they're going. When they go, that's when you'll get one. Cha- when you'll change it, so you will lose. So grease in the nipples, and like that, lads. Well, it's a f- what that. That's a little punchline just there. That's for people who know to give each other that elbow and go. <laughs> you remember that fucking time we fucking found that thing under the fucking the teleporter? <laughs> who fucking knew it had a nipple? Who knew that was there? That's that moment. That's for. That's a real. That's what gamers would call an Easter egg. <sighs> And, and that's what it is. So, so, so Marty is proposing a situation that he has hammered it so fast that he can actually get out like fucking Quicksilver in the X Men and just he, fucking exactly Quicksilver or who knows he he's reached a higher state of consciousness where he's passed between worlds and it's almost like the man in the high castle. You know what I mean? He is literally fucking stepping in and out of dimensions. To because he's in such a place of happiness, the all world has aligned for Marty in this moment. He no, couldn't no, be happier. No, no, Tom. Let's just let's just take that. But let's just imagine it's not that, and read this a little bit different. Because okay. as, as we learned, all from right, last, okay, just in all gravy, is it possible that when he started to roll and put all wheels in the air? That he's actually couped the tractor over onto its side here, that he's crashed the thing. I, I thought that, and I was I, I would nearly hope that he would have found another. I would imagine he hit her until so let's go that way. Because I have read it two ways, but I way prefer the fucking <laughs> trans-dimensional so one. 
But <laughs> let's go. You're absolutely right. To hit it in low, she started to fucking roll because there wasn't enough synchronization in the gearbox to hold it. It rolled fucking backwards. And sure, look it. And like you that, she ended up in a big old fucking hole. Tits, All wheels tits in the and air. arms in the fucking air. I just went, sure, while you're there, love, I may as well grace your nipples. I, 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 it was my chance to graze the nipples. I never knew it was there. Meaning to say, I'm stood here, tracked her arse up in the air, like a duck on its back, yeah. and nobody's coming for me for an hour, so I may as well pass the time by some tractor maintenance. I've read it, I, I have read it that way before when I heard the song for the first time, but really, I just, you know, when, that's, when I saw the lyrics up in front of me, I just went, you know what, fuck it. I hope, I, 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 hope I, I really hope, I really hope it was, but I think, I fear you may be right. I fear, I you fear may I'm be right. I, I only fear I may may be right because we've got uh, <laughs> we've got nothing good stretching out in front of us here, Tom. Need some sleep and new teeth for digging and dozing in muck. Now he needs some sleep because the man, by my last count, is getting about three hours of un of of restless sleep. Uh, because if he's not in a tractor on his way to a job, he's on his tractor on his way home from one. Yeah. So he needs some sleep. He's yeah. Fucked. He's t- he needs new teeth. Now, we're not talking about teeth. He's not going to Turkey for new teeth. <laughs> he's, not, he's not going for veneers. No, no, I don't believe he's going for, for veneers. I, I, I had initially read it that he needed new teeth in his mouth because he's in a rattly tractor all summer and it has literally, like, he's literally broken his teeth from rattling around the place. Because I've been in some tractors, Tom, and in JCBs and such, like, and you would need a gum shield for when you hit a fucking... Yeah. Uh, it's not like suspension, like you, you hit a bump and you really, you feel it, you grit your teeth, you get it. Like so, But it, it seems that he just needs new teeth like you would need for a digger. So this is a third vehicle that Marty Moan is now. He's jumping yes. all over this. Because, fucking, and I will tell you, a digger now. I will tell you that chances are 70% of the lads that do this for a living, they can drive all, four, all three of these vehicles and loving them equally. And they have a jacket slash free polo shirt that they got at the Clown Championship to match all three. <laughs> yeah. I've seen this with my own. I was there two years ago hosting a thing for... for uh, God, I can't even remember. I was hosting a thing. I had a lot of downtime in between the hosting sessions that I had to do. And I went walking. And a friend of mine... A, f- a friend of mine. I believe, yeah, you. I believe you've met. You've definitely met her husband. Um, her father has bought a. They're from Clonus, and they okay. bought they bought Red Rock a couple of years ago. Not the TV three oh, okay. uh, show about um, guards. Guards, no. But he took it to a new level. Brought in some engineering. Fucking brought out buck rakes that you had ne- ain't never seen before. Brought out some cool merch, i.e fucking cool fucking merch a lot of merch well oh my, i i made every intention to go up to this gentleman because i i would have met him at their wedding i could not get past the fully grown fle- <laughs> absolute swarm of fanboys that were queuing around just to talk to this man about fucking machinery like phenomenal phenomenal it was their time to fucking sh- this was comic con it is comic con for people who own wellies that's what it is comic like and that's and that's it's it, for some reason it seems to be almost uh, kind of a a, a lifestyle that's poo pooed you know but all of a sudden yeah mar because of marvel and all these other things they've made it cool to be a nerd now and comic con is like awesome well for these lads they couldn't give if Jason Momoa could have been fucking doing push ups over there. They didn't give a sh- they wouldn't have given a shit. They could have had Tony Stark actually come in on in the suit, fly in in the suit, but unless it had fucking Husk Varna on the back of it, they would not <laughs> have given a fuck. Like, I, I just keep on having to reiterate how much this means to these lads. So everyone but you're hundred percent right, it's new teeth for the digger bucket. Uh, right. Which do have to be replaced, of course. Uh, especially when, uh, if you're doing a lot of digging of rock, you will wear those teeth down. Sometimes they'll snap. They'll actually fucking snap. This can be up to fucking two inches of steel can actually snap. That's the kind of power you're talking about here. And if you've got a gummy bucket, it's no good to fucking nobody. 
no good to be nobody for digging and dozing in the muck. I mean, Marty's like spreading himself thin here. I don't know how he has time to fucking reclaim a whole bunch of land or do a bit of quarry in here when he's fucking mowing, lifting, sowing, bailing 24 hours a day. In but case it rains, Tom, what does he need in case it rains? He needs an owl chain lying in the rock. Now, Google, Google Lyrics has given me O-W-L chain, yeah. but I'm not going to spend Yeah, you know what it is. is. You know what it is. Every what good truck chain will... might be. Every truck, a truck will have a good, a good owl chain. A good owl uh, chain. With a hook probably on either end of it, you know, just for... Lying in the truck. So there you go, do, dozing in the muck in case it rains. So in case it rains, more so in the tractors. If it does rain, you get buried and your diff does not fucking work. This is actually a really poignant line right here because the whole name of the song is hit the diff. If the diff and pray. And pray. And if your prayers and your diff don't sort you out, this is what I was talking about. Go get somebody with a bigger fucking thing, i.e. in the back of the truck, they'll have an old yeah, chain. They'll have an old chain. And a truck will pull you out, all right. I mean, like it's it's pessimistic at best, Tom. It is, but like he's, the good he's, boy he's, scout he's always casting, always is prepared. Yeah, he's always prepared, but like already, as you say yourself, he's already casting doubts on the abilities of his diff and God. True, but we do live in Ireland. This isn't the fucking Arizona farming channel. This is <laughs> this is one of the we actually have. I mean, mutual friend Jimmy Elliot has you know yes. made made a career out of talking about bugs. An American guy talking about fucking bogs. We have a lot of wet soil here just pouring into the middle of this country. So chains are needed. Chains, chains are fucking... Chains, you, know chains. What? They, you know what? They're, they're like so many things. It's like, you know, you, you buy a gun for protection in America. You keep it under the bed. In a, you never want to use it. But it's nice to know it's there, Jerry. You know what I mean? Could, could, we, could, we, could we read into it that these are Marty Moan's chains just like Jacob Marley's chains? <laughs> It goes to Chris, Christmas silage. It goes to silage past that, like, you, these are the fucking chains of the past. Like, you know, change your think, ways. Change your ways. You know, I don't think, I don't think we need to, I don't think we need to, to, to go that deep in it because I don't think Marty did. Uh, I think he has an actual chain in the back of a truck. Yes, he does. Yes, he fucking <laughs> does. Yes, he does. And you'd be ashamed told- to get caught and not have one. The shame. Well, listen, the shame. Lads have buried machinery just out of the shame of not having a way of get your, getting yourself out. They've just gone, fuck it, and denied any knowledge of cover, the situation. Cover it over. Cover it over. Bury it the fucking thing because I do not, it, you know, the shame. I once saw a guy turn up to a garage, Jerry, and this was just <laughs> a f- a phenomenal. Phenomenal. He turned up to a garage with the breakdown truck. With the, this was a, a look, I, I, you know, I'm not, shouting from the patriarchy but there are times as a fucking man that you have to fucking hang your head in shame and, <laughs> because you are a man and those are the fucking that is the card you were dealt this guy turned up with the breakdown truck after driving his Maserati his three month old Maserati for 40 miles with the oil light on he sees the fucking engine and he showed up I would throw a fucking match into it, walk away, and report say it was robbed. And say it was robbed. Before, I would, can you imagine showing up to a professional mechanic and with a big goofy head and saying, I just seized my engine. Did, like, everything in me just wanted to just go, excuse me, have you got your man card in your wallet? Because I'm just tearing I'm in front tearing, of you. Just, that's it. That up. You're done. You're fucking well, you're not done. Gonna... You're not going to catch Marty like that because... Are you? Whatever the fucking weather, he has a chain in the truck for it, Tom. You're <laughs> goddamn got, right he does. He's got big chains and wee chains. He launches into a little reprieve. You think he's going into the chorus here when he says, climbing, lyming, mixing, piping. So he's, 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 again, he's, he's doing several jobs here. Climbing, I guess. He's climbing a, climbing a steep hill, I suppose. I get. I guess climbing. I mean, he could have gone into construction here instead of climbing scaffolding. Who knows? I mean, it's such a broad term. I can't. I mean, <laughs> I, personally, I do think you're right. I think he's. he's not, yeah, but Tom, I don't think he's fucking climbing the corporate ladder here. <laughs> <laughs> he's climbing the charts, Tom. He's Fantastic. climbing the charts. Climbing. He's climbing. Without... He's liming. No, the lime is not like a not not a splash of lime in your fucking gin and tonic. This is I fucking hate lime. Tonic. Oh man, 
I have, I still have cracked knuckles, skin, knuckle skin, many years later from the dermatitis I got from Lyme. Uh, yeah. Like, what, what addition is Lyme to a farmer? It uh, balances the acidity. So if you have an overly alkaline, so you would often bring out, say Tommy Tiernan's father was an agricultural advisor. Okay. In the same department, you would ask for lads who did ag science in college. They would come out and they would do soil tests around your farm. Before you would go, you would, would say, this is before you go to seed. Okay. And they would say, so you know. I, I said, okay there, Tom. I was like, I don't fucking know what Okay, so you plow this. <laughs> before you go to seed. Right, yeah, gotcha. You plow this. <laughs> You've possibly, um, you've, you've plowed it and you've harrowed it and you've rolled it or whatever and you've seeded it. But this is to test, maybe even test it while the grass is on it to see what it might need throughout the year. And say you come back with an overly alkaline as per the water table may dictate or as per what the crops you've been growing on it, you've ended up with a fucking overly alkaline crop well, or soil. Well, what you'll do is quite literally, like you'll see the little spreaders guys have yeah, on yeah, yeah, for yeah, lawns. Yeah. And that's what it is. Guys will go with lime. I driving through Offaly, the back roads of Offaly between Burr and Nina one time. How I didn't end up in a 10 car pileup as a result of a guy liming, but the wind caught up. And pretty oh, much, yeah. we're talking, you could not see beyond your windscreen wipers, let alone the, in the middle of the day, just came around, came around the bend to what I knew was a straight. And thank God I had a hitch on the back of the fucking Land Cruiser I was driving at the time because a guy just tipped, I mean, just tipped me. Well, would you believe it? His own Land Cruiser. And we crawled for all, we, and just whoever was on the back, whoever was on the six, it was like fucking yeah. Vietnam coming through looking for fucking Colonel Kurtz. It was terrifying for about fucking five minutes, which is a journey that should have only taken like 20 seconds this straight because this guy was liming like fucking crazy. In, in over this hedge in a field and he was it was like crop dusting that was just sitting there in the air I, shut I, I all the vents I fucking loved the way Tommy were there like you know yeah I was in my Land Cruiser and I got hit by another guy in his Land Cruiser would you believe it would I believe two Land Cruisers would hit each other in the country top? yeah I believe that I, I don't struggle with that <laughs> okay alright I've owned a few Toyotas in my time what, what can I say um Come here, and he goes on to say he's climbing, liming, mixing, piping. Now, we talked about piping earlier, and we didn't know whether it was like piping slurry or was he piping the little tunnels that I thought you it know was. I, I, I would love if it is that. I, and again, there's a lot of agri- ag boys that listen to this podcast, a lot of agri lads and girls that listen to this podcast. Um, I would love some of your feedback if we've gotten it totally fucking wrong. The piping, I've given the three sta- well, the piping, I, would, well, I mean, here we go. This he's could, piping again. He's a he, piece now, second form Who's of to say this I'm, piping? He hasn't said anything about spreading piping. He may actually be using said digger to do groundworks and he may be laying drainage. Well, all I'm saying is here he's saying that he's piping after the field is cut, which would uh, be pipe and slurry, right? Yeah, yeah, I would imagine so. I would imagine so. Well, you're right, I, actually, I the, you're I, right. I, I, get, I get the piping you're talking about as well, the big yellow uh, land drainage piping. Could be, it. or could, yeah. Um, this, I think it, I think you're right though. Out. Piping after the field, because of course they've punctuated and there's a capital uh, on the after. Yeah. So after the field is cut, yeah, it, it uh, will be piping after the field is cut. And this is this is the last one, Tom. Now, throughout all this, I hope I've displayed, you know, if if not the exact knowledge of what we were at, I was I've been wrong on a lot of things, but I like to think that I was like nearly there on most of these things. You but were. A couple of things you were amazingly this. there on. Yeah. When we get to this from day one to right now, I haven't got a fucking clue what Marty Moon means by the lines. There's many a gap you won't get out without 6,000 foot. Help me out, Tom. What so let's the go. What fuck is Marty talking about here? So let's get back to the umbilical cord. Right. So you get into a big field. The farmer yes. says to you, I need you to do that field. I see all those satellite fields around it. I need you to do all those too. Okay. And you turned up with your 3,000 foot pipe. Well, what won't you get at? What won't you get at if you've got less than 6,000 foot? You won't get at many as a gap, Tom. Damn fucking right you won't. Goddamn right you won't. Because the big boys turn up with 6,000 foot. 
because they spent a few quid last fucking winter. They got the 6,000 foot pipe because it's 3,000 foot, it's Mickey Mouse shit. Literally Mickey Mouse shit. You got to get out the 6,000 foot pipe. That's when you're fucking, that's spreading, cutting, piping, fucking clutching. That's when, that's when you're going hard or going home. You turn up with 6,000. Yo, who the fuck turns up with 3,000? It's the fuck, this is the major leagues, bitch. And that is, that's it. That's what the big boys bring. They turn up with six, nobody, nobody shows up with 3,000 foot. Not unless you want to get fucking lapped out of them. And that's a phrase that you'd say, you go, you won't, get, you know, you won't get that fuck off. You're, you're wasting your time, is essentially what he's saying. You're turning up to a fucking gunfight with a knife. That's what you're doing. Well, with anything I, less than 3,000 fucking foot. Or 6,000 foot. In the interest of getting fucking laughed out of it one last time, Tom, I may as well tell you what I thought Marky Moon was saying. Yes. Oh, yes. Go on. It, 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 were you thinking in, in elevation? That was you thinking like climbing Everest 6,000? No. Okay. All right. N- no. I thought that what he meant by a gap, I meant by uh, that he meant like a little sort of jut in of a field or like, you know, where, 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 where the, the field stops being a field and starts becoming you know, access to a gate or what have you. A little jut in. Okay. And if you, want, if you wanted to cut all the grass in the field, including the grass that was in the gap, a tractor uh, isn't, isn't, isn't like, a, like, a, like, a, like, a, like a like a vacuum cleaner that you can just get into that little gap and get that little bit of grass. So you need a run up to it, Tom. You need a good run up to it. Uh, about uh, 6,000 <laughs> foot of a run up to it. I fucking knew you were <laughs> Oh, bless. God bless me, innocent. God bless I, I, thought, you. I thought it was like, you know, all right, there's a gap coming up in here and I want to, like, you know, get mow that as well. And I'm, I'm going to have to start my run up to it now, a mile yeah. away. Do you know, you know what? The wording of it, when you do read it, to forgive you, the wording of it, there's many a gap you won't get out without 6,000 foot of a run up. Yeah, I, yeah. But it's coded. He hasn't, like, he, like so many things in this. If you know, you know. You know what I mean? It's 6, if foot. you know, you know. But like I say, the, you know, the reason why I didn't know what Marty was talking about is because he's talking about shit I didn't know fucking existed. Well, it's, 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 it's if I turned so around. So much to... I didn't know about like, agriculture, it would appear. Hey, listen, I, not, you know what? I'm pretty sure you've probably been a bit smarmy yourself in your day when somebody walked in and go, could I get a, could I get a, a, two, a two by four? Uh, because they saw it on telly you go no we don't have any we don't fucking have any are you fucking joking me yeah we have plenty of four by two out there yeah dipshit i don't Um, one last time marty launches us into the chorus there tom that joyous chorus of mowing lifting sewing bailing even though everything he's talking about so far has been like at, at, at best zero crack (laughs) <laughs> oh, man, you don't get it right fucking miserable you don't get it jerry this is it, this song is not as joyous as i thought it was this is <laughs> I, I you know what i came into thinking this was a joyous celebration of agriculture whereas in actual fact it's 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 it's, fu- it's, it, it's hardship it's hardship it's is what it is it is it is hardship but you know what it's hardship veiled in the fucking love the love of fucking the grind you know what i mean you're not putting these guys in an office. You're not putting these guys in a fucking HR environment where they're going to fucking, I'll get back to you on that one, Steve. You're not putting these lads in that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? They're not pushing the envelope. You know, they're not whatever other office. They're not. These guys are hauling, they're illegally hauling 40 tons of grass. Yeah. And they're getting it done. That's what you do. You get it fucking done, Jerry. You get it. With little or no control of the machinery they're sitting in. Up three steps to fucking heaven. There you you go. Up there, 200 horsepower, good, bad, or indifferent fucking yoke. Once you've a kind of easy start and a fucking heavy foot, you'll be fine. These guys are getting it done, Jerry. These are the real deal. Well, there's, a, there's one last line we have to turn to, Tom, when he comes to, to the end of it here now. Hit the diff and pray that she goes all the way. I can't not sing it. Of course. When I'm sat in the pot with the party hats, I'm heading for the day. They thought that we were quitting because the summer doesn't last. But we're heading to New Zealand where the crack it only starts. Antipathy and fucking laws. There's something about this, Tom, because when this song came out, I think it was, uh, I think it's like around about 2012 or thereabouts. Am I right in saying that? Must be. Yeah, right easy. About, right easy. Months. Now, I know that there was like half the nation was emigrating because the country was on its hole at the time. Mm-hmm. Something 
something very sad about this now. I mean, like, Marty's off to New Zealand with the half of the fucking young lads of the nation who went down to Australia, New Zealand, and Canada because it was the only place in the world that you get another. And I know a lot of boys that went to Australia. And I know a lot of boys that have never come home and probably will never come home, Tom. Uh, it's like the song, The Flight of the Earls, you know? It uh, really is. Our greatest export is, uh, you know, is also our saddest. It is also our saddest. So there's, there's a, a poignancy to the end of it here now that Marty is, uh, uh, the summer's over. Yeah. He's not quitting. But he can't go on here. He has to go elsewhere. Maybe this is why he doesn't fucking get back onto the woman until Christmas. Because the Hoover's down in New Zealand. Yeah. Then Where? fucking up. Then <laughs> hitting dips in Auckland is what he's doing. Fucking right. He is ripping around Hobbiton. That's what he's doing. He is fucking <laughs> mowing. He's, he's mowing he's the top field of fucking Hobbiton. Bag End. That's what he's doing. He's driving Bag End into the fucking ground. So he is. <laughs> he's plowing fucking the Aya Sauron and out, out of it. He's fucking got a chain around the fucking base of Saruman's fucking <laughs> tower. And he's pulled it down. The, he, it, it, it's, 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 there's a sadness to this I think as well Tom Marty Moon because again like you know he would be to look at the man he looks to be about our age like late 30s early 40s mm. there or thereabouts I know you're a bit younger than me but Marty looks a bit older than me so I'm like we're all of we would have been in when school together sleep, but not in the same class you sleep, if you know what I mean when you sleep three hours a night that man might be only 22 you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> That's how you can tell. That's like that's the difference between Marty Moen and Richie Remo because Richie Remo looks like a fucking soft hands that was never on a farm when he's like, yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. Like Richie Remo, that man has moisturizer. He's gre- yeah. he's greased nipples, but not the mechanical. Guy. Yeah, he's you know fucking I mean? his own. Uh, yeah, there's something about that. Tom, the summer doesn't last, but we're heading to New Zealand where the crack only starts. And I do hope that Marty, if he went to New Zealand with the lads to. Mo lift so and bail down there for a while that he had a bit of crack that the crack was only starting and oh come here he... I'm telling you now you see this is the it's chasing it's chasing the dragon is what it is Jerry this is an addiction lads have and they will have up to the day they die you see you can see, look at this from a very melancholy point of view and you go well this is fucking hardship through and through these guys love hardship I have seen fucking agri mechanics under forty ton fucking diggers in fields in Longford where the muck was fucking two foot of shit. There's grease pouring down into their mouth as they're fucking dropping a sump out of a thing at 11 o'clock at night. It's minus two. There's rain blowing in the side of their fucking ear and they've got fucking Highland country sounds from down your way playing flat out out of the van beside them or the Jeep beside them and they couldn't be happier. And they say things like, oh, Jesus there must be easier ways of making a living and you're going, but you wouldn't there do is. it. There you fucking wouldn't, is easier ways. But they wouldn't do it. They Many. wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it because these lads are different type of human. Oh, and heading to New Zealand, you mean, hold on, this is, this is like in your younger days, Ger, and you're on the sauce and the beer is going down great. And even at closing time, closing time, two, three o'clock in the morning if it's a late bar, at closing time, you still find you've space. You've space for more beer. And that fucking goo is on you where you can't go home because you've neither chick nor child. You don't have to go home. You're saying, what do you reckon is next, lads? And all of a sudden, somebody says something amazing like, boys, fucking have it back to my place. There's a little rake of beer. I have a fucking rake of beer. And what do you do? You all fucking pile into an old minivan and you head back to his spot and the crack only it starts. Only fucking starts again because now you can start singing out loud fucking tops off having the fucking crack. And you're not thinking about fucking tomorrow. You're thinking about fucking the moment you're living in. Can we fucking... Can I get smokes? Can I get Lucasade? And is there a fucking tractor for me to drive down New Zealand? And are all the boys going? Because you all speak the same language. You talk the fucking talk. You want to hang with your own tribe and then you're going down to New Zealand to do it. You mean... So we can just stay in continuous state of summer. A continuous fucking, state of summer. You know, when you say they talk the fucking same language, Tom, I, don't, I, don't, I doubt there's any fucking New Zealand guys there going like, yeah, mate, there was my chance to grease the nipples, so I did not know who's there. <laughs> oh, I was hurting with the party hits. I was, yeah, I was I, I, with I, the party hits. Oh, I oh, oh. it too, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's, there's money or gup. You work at art with us, with us stars and foot. Yeah. You know What's, what that What's that in meters? What's that in meters? 
You know, if if you're in a predicament, you just got to hit the different pipe, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm not on a rocks. Uh... <laughs> that's that's my New Zealand. I got, yeah, I got, I got. It's, pre- it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's well, pretty good. Go. Um, I of course will play the course on the end of this, even though I'll get pulled so much way to wrap up this podcast. Jerry McBride, this has been a fucking gargantuan effort. I didn't. Well, it wasn't an effort at all. It was fucking cracked from beginning to end. But we have done the longest podcast I have ever done. We've um, done the Lord's work here, Tom. We. I genuinely thought this was going to be a struggle. I thought we will not get long out of this. This will we will literally be hitting the diff about twenty minutes in, and going, how are we going to fucking plow on through this? And I, little I, did I know, close I'm to change, two and a half, man. two and a half hours later, it took us to dissect the fucking. Epic I'm, I'm, song. I'm, 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 I'm a changed man at the end of it, Tom. Like I came into this all fucking sunshine and roses, and this is a great song, and I'd love to put it on when I'm running and I really get the blood flow. But next time I hear this fucking song. I'm just going to stop and stare into the distance thinking of all the fucking hardship these boys go through. As one ear you have hit the diff and the other ear would be, hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tom, thank you. Thank you so much for oh, having me on. Uh, dude, thank you very much for making, making this just making on, the Tom. effort. And it has been a fucking monster. Uh, one more time, Jerry McBride and Tom O'Mahony hit the diff. To play us out, Marty, I'm sure you won't mind. Thank you very, very much. Good bless. And mind your nipples. Bone, lip and sew and bail and drawn, hauling, number breaking, back and stacking, plowing, crashing, tipping, rapping, deal doors flapping, sucking, diesel, cutting, trucking, spreading, piping, double clutching, spinning, sliding, digging, rigging, rearing, tearing, losing, win. Oh, hit the diff and pray that she goes all the way. When I'm flat to the mat with the party hat, some heading for the say. On a can of easy start And fifteen hundred acres Hauling forty ton of grass I said goodbye before July To the woman in an awful rush And it was near Christmas Before I got back in touch I found a seat But I had no brakes Couldn't keep it cool With loads of power I'm behind an hour So I'd give them up the screw Out all night with no lights Only seeing stars